they like to stay undefeated against Nebraska. So keep back, relax, enjoy this one. It's Texas Tech against Nebraska coming up on College Football Saturday presented by Suzuki. Guys, heavy. The 2008 college football season showcases a Big 12 conference rich in superstar quarterbacks. Today, you may witness greatness as the top passer in Texas Tech history, Graham Harrell, takes his shot at an aggressive Nebraska Cornhusker defense. And down he goes. Heisman Trophy candidate Graham Harrell and sophomore sensation Michael Crabtree have already set the record books on fire. QB Graham Harrell averages over 400 yards per game. Texas Tech averages over 48 points per game. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Can Nebraska slow down high-powered seventh-ranked Texas Tech? Exciting college football Saturday action starts now. Today, we'll see the Big 12's all-time passing leader, Graham Harrell of the Red Raiders. As Nebraska's Joe Gans will try to slow him down, try to pull off the upset after throwing for almost 300 last week against Missouri. It's a wet one in West Texas, but as we all know, it's not going to slow anyone down around here. From Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Suzuki. Today, the undefeated seventh-ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Gary Reasons, and welcome to Lubbock. Well, it's been a long, long time since the Red Raiders have been ranked as high as number seven of the nation. You have to go back to 1976, but it has been decades since they've had a talent like Michael Crabtree. Well, Michael Tra Crabtree is an exceptional wide receiver, just a sophomore, second year into this program, 30 touchdown receptions already in his young career, just halfway through his sophomore campaign. He's a big play receiver, a big play, big target for Graham Harrell. He's an exceptional receiver, should be fun today. Uh, last week, Nebraska faced Missouri at home. Conference opener gave up 52 points. Another spread offense this week. How do they slow him down? Well, it's going to be difficult for Bo Pelini and his defense to, to slow down this offense. What they've got to do is got to play a clean defensive effort. What I mean by that, no penalties. They've got to find a way to put pressure on Graham Harrell will have to bring some help perhaps from their secondary to get that done. It's Nebraska in Red Raider land. Homecoming weekend for the number seven Texas Tech Red Raiders. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Suzuki. And when we come back, Mike Goldberg and DeMarco Farr will rejoin the guys in our College Football Saturday studio. We had a perfect day for football if the rain stays away. And the Cornhuskers on the road, believe it or not, for the first time this year, out of the 119 teams, Division 1A, they're the last to hit the road. And the homecoming Red Raiders take the field as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxie. Coach, tell us, how can you try to slow down this Texas Tech offense led by Graham Harrell? Well, we just need to execute. We need to take what we uh, did in practice and take our game plan and execute. Be aggressive. Get after them. We know they're a good offense. It's going to be a good test for us, but I, I like our plan. I like the way our guys are prepared. I like their mindset, and we're ready to play some football. Thank you, Coach. Joel? All right, Jim. Well, Texas Tech won the toss, and they want to get their offense on the field right away. And I talked about the weather. Well, temperature-wise, could be better. But there is rain in the area. It poured this morning for about an hour. So let's see if that affects the field. We know that this field drains so well after being here about three weeks ago. Those were monsoon floods, though. <laughs> so... Back deep, it's going to be Jamar Wall, along with, on the far side, LaRon Moore. And we are ready to go. Kicking it away. Adi Kulnanek. And he keeps it low. Upman is going to take it for the Red Raiders. It's going to be Ryan Hale. It is across the 30, out to the 32. So the fullback, Hale, Jr. from Baton, Texas. And our Liberty Mutual starting lineup. Well, Murphy is the big gun on the right side. And he's been playing at a high level, but he's going to have to wait for his turn to get out there. Instead, Brandon Carter, according to the right guard, according to Mike Leach, he has been the best guy so far over the first five on the offensive line. And they've got a nice combination in the backfield, Woods and Batch, and both of them average just shy of 70 yards a game, a good combination. They finally have a running game going at Texas Tech. And in fact, the best per game average since 1999. So they keep up the ground to start things off. And I talked about the running game, 144 yards. 
per game, and they were dead last in the nation last year. They were 119 out of the 119 teams we were just talking about. Shannon Woods with the carry. Graham Harrell, though, what a success story for this young man. The senior from Ennis, Texas, surpassing all of the totals here of Cliff Kingsbury. And Kingsbury had a great run. The young man from New Braunfels outside of San Antonio. But Graham Harrell playing at a high level, and if he continues at this rate, he will finish second all-time in NCAA history. He'll be second and short for the Red Raiders. And again, big game for Woods. Across the 45, so they spread it out the wide splits, and we've all seen for a number of years now with Mike Leach and Gary. They are effective on the ground. And if they want to run, if they can run the football today, that's really going to help the passing game for Mike Leach, and they'll run it all day long. Don't don't take it wrong, Joel. They're pass first offense here with Mike Leach, but if you can run the football, and Nebraska's just not going to crowd the box. Look for a back. And Shannon Woods to get the ball part of it. They've got three bunched on the far side there. The top of your screen, and Crabtree is in the middle of there, the big wide receiver. A ton of time. Woods underneath. Man, nothing doing. Half a yard loss, maybe. And now, the Huskers defensively. Can they do enough to well, prevent the Red Raiders from their average of 48 a game? Zach Potter playing at a high level. Honorable mention all Big 12 last year. Cody Glenn, the former Ibac. Well, they've nicked up a little bit last week. We may see Matt Holt there as well. They're starting to 4-2-5 with good reason, but those five, it's a track meet for them today. The guys in the secondary for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah, the Huskers normally a 4-3 defense playing the 4-2-5 here, trying to matching up with the uh, Texas Tech spread offense. And it's not going to be just the nickel. Gary, you know that. They're going to have six in there a lot, too. Ton of time for Graham Harrell. Crabtree and Frame behind him. He was all locked up with Murillo, the senior out of Tampa, the cornerback on that side. Did a good job in coverage. Yeah, I think he was looking for a back shoulder throw there. Looks like uh, Crabtree going down the sidelines. A little body language here from his quarterback as he comes back to the huddle, thinking he was probably going to come back for that football, but one got away. But, you know, anything can happen here with this offense. They got good field position. You know, this might be two down territory for Mike Leach, even early in the ball game. He loves to go for it on fourth down. Good point. Two to each side, Crabtree. Bottom to the side, on the bottom of the screen. And I bring him up, 6'3", 215-pound sophomore from Dallas, the Politnikoff award winner last year. Harrell running out of the racing room of the play clock, and did he get it off in time? He's in trouble, and he throws it away. It could have been almost a layup game, but it pays off that they did throw a flag for Nebraska. Yeah, Larry Asante, this free strong safety, comes through. Number four, watch him. He is going to be get by the, the tailback who tries to put a block on him, and he gets to Graham Harrell. Excellent job by the defense there for Nebraska negating this first opening drive here from Texas Tech. Well, the Huskers sending back Nate Swift. One of their all-time leading receivers who we'll be talking about this afternoon. Look, Poor gets into it. Swift back at an 11. Making the first one miss, and that is it, though. Out to about the 17, getting the 18-yard line for the Huskers. Lance Fuller down there on the special team. And our Liberty Mutual starting lineup, guys up front. Now, Lyde Murtha, you deserve that attention. I'll <laughs> mention the Big 12 senior from Hutchinson, Kansas. Marlon Rocky will start, but you'll also see Helu and Castile at running back. And, and in fact, Sean Watson told us their offensive coordinator, Gary, they want to get more spreads, more one-back sets. Yeah, they really want to find their identity offensively, and Joe Gans here, the leader of this offense, and his season's been pretty up and down so far. Had a great start, slow middle, and kind of finished off pretty good last week against Missouri. Threw the football pretty well, almost 300 yards in the football game. He's going to need to be effective throwing the ball short intermediate passes today. Yeah, the first one. He wins it out on the edge. It's complete to mentally Colt, the junior from San Diego, for good yardage. Almost like a run. High percentage throw. Gets close to five. And, and one of the biggest differences for Texas Tech, forget about their offense, is we look at the Liberty Mutual starting defensive line. Brandon Williams playing at a high level of left end. This group is only giving up 19 points a game. And that's the real difference with Texas Tech. They're playing at a high level on the opposite side of the ball. Yeah, they're doing a good job defensively. Very aggressive. Weffel McNeil, the defensive coordinator, has brought a new philosophy to this defense, and it's working from last season till now. Coming out, it goes to Nate Swift. That was going to be close it's, here to the first down mark. It's a yard shy. Pulled it off in front of Brent Nickerson. A little space on the corner, so going underneath. And I think they're going to give him the first down, Joe. Pretty good spot there on the football, so. 
Joe Gans coming out, getting a couple of quick completions here to get his offense on track. And, you know, we talked with with Sean, the, the defense offense coordinator from Nebraska, and basically he told us that they want to find out what their personnel are capable of, and they kind of know who they are now. Expect to see some more spread today. Sean Watson telling us that this week. They've got four wide receivers set up. Opens things up the middle for Marlon Lucky and a good gain on first down of seven, almost eight yards, and our principal edge of the game. Our principal financial edge of the game. And the key's coming in, Gary. Well, basically for Texas, the first for Nebraska here, they've got to play a clean game. That means no penalties, and I think they've got to be able to do that. A lot of problems with that over the last couple of weeks. Third down on defense, they've got to stop Texas Tech. You cannot let them convert. They did a great job the first series out, getting that stop on third down, allowed Nebraska's offense to get on the field. Let's see if they keep it to the ground in a bunch formation. Kind of a jumbo look for Nebraska, they will. They'll slide the H back over, and Lucky gets the first down. Bumped out just shy of the 40, and a good job of not outrunning his blocking. She got about five yards. And now we're going to take a look at Texas Tech for, for their little bit of mutual keys or edge of the game here. We'll take a look at their offense. You know, I think they need to take Nebraska and make them a one-dimensional offense. Let them be a runner or a passing team, but don't let them do both. And offensively, what Mike Leach does with his offense all the time is they're a first down machine. They keep putting them off. Every year, they have more first downs than anybody in the country. Well, Nebraska comes in today trying to avoid a fifth consecutive road loss. Now, that's a rarity for Nebraska. Wing it out to Lucky. And Lucky on the edge could gain again about six yards across the 45 to the 46-yard line. You know, Bo Pelini talked about execution, Joel. That was the thing that they talked to us this week about if their offense and their defense can execute, they feel like they can compete and be a, be a player in the Big 12 championship picture, perhaps in the north. They've got to play well today. And early in the ball game here, we see it defensively. Now we see with Joe Gans and this offense, they're executing, they're doing the things they need to to move the football. Taking over Helu in the backfield. Two tight ends set for the Huskers. On second and short, Helu popped immediately. Coming underneath Brian Duncan, the inside backer with a flag on the play. No gain on the carry and a quick flag at that. Third down or second and long? Holding on the offense, number 68. 10 yard penalty, second down. Now Brian Duncan, he's done a decent job of solidifying the middle of the defense for Texas Tech and get the holding penalty there against Nebraska. That's one of the self-destruct kind of things we talked about as far as being a clean game. That does not allow you to be clean in a football game. But Brian Duncan, he's been solid in there, Joel. He's the number one tackler on the Texas Tech defense and been a pretty good leader out there. Just a sophomore, though, and he's been very active. So move it back instead of third and four. It's going to be second and 14 for the Huskers. It's all started deep in their own territory, don't forget. Back at the 18. Slide Hilo out of the backfield, look in that direction, pop it over the middle. Available. And that's their wide receiver, Holt, the junior from San Diego. Good throw by Joe Gans, and he hit his first eight last week against Missouri. They moved the ball against Missouri, but they made mistakes against Mizzou, too. Well, you see the penalty set them back now. Now they're not on track, but this is a third and manageable situation. That's a pretty good opportunity to get that ball down the field. They did a nice throw to Malik. First down marker all brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order of ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. And you're number three in the nation defensively here. Texas Tech is on third down for only allowing 21%. That's pretty good numbers for Ruffin's defense. It'll be third and three. Here comes the heat off the edge. Ganji loses it. Can he run for it? No. It was broken up by Brandon Williams. He doesn't get the sack, but Brandon Williams busted up the play the first one in there, Gary. And Brandon Williams has been the one who's been put the most pressure on defensively for this football team from Texas Tech. If you take the defensive end coming around the edge, he's going to get to the quarterback and make him do something he doesn't want to do. That means step up in the pocket where his friends are there waiting for him. Talked about third down play defensively. Texas Tech doing a good job there. They lead the nation 21%. Another turned away. Well, McKenna Dixon gets credit for the sack. That is number six for him. He rotates in. He does not start. Jamar Wall, that deep for the Red Raiders, but Dixon, number two in the country with six sacks. Wall lets it sail into the end zone. So the punt from Tishner, a good one. But it comes all the way, and Megan Welsh instead. It comes all the way back to the 20. We are tailgating in West Texas with Outback Steakhouse. And you know, there's sushi eaters down here in Lubbock. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. 
We love it, love it. I promise you that. We come down here, we have a blast. That, that's yeah. There you go. Cue it. Oh, dainty, put, aren't they? Put your order in now, Joel. Yeah. Well, I think we ate half a cow last night. It's at the 20. <laughs> it's first and 10 for the Red Raiders. They had one first down in the first series. Had to punt. Nebraska though looked effective offensively. West punted it the first time. Good one, but he could get it to die inside the five, and that's why the Red Raiders have it. And it's Shannon Woods stacked up and driven back after a gain of only a yard. Nice job in the middle. Defensive tackle up front there might be Ty Stein, excuse me, Ty Steincooler stepping up there and making a nice defensive stand and not allowing his defense to move. His offense to move. Opalini, that's Carl Flynn, the defensive coordinator, Bo's older brother. And, New to the program this year for Nebraska, and trying to instill a little bit of attitude, you know, playing consistently, playing hard, but also playing smart and playing clean. They don't need any personal foul penalties like they've been having the last several weeks. It's a second and long. Call it second and nine of the 21. Abby, the center, looking back as Harold changes the play at the line. That's Detron Lewis, and he's got a first down across the 30. That was the key to the sophomore from College Station. Isolated. Well, they match up with him outside. Eric Hag has a dozen in coverage there. Just needs to make a nice tackle on him, but good effort there after the catch doing that. Nice job moving the ball down the field, and Detron Lewis gets that first first down for Mike Leach's offense. They've got it for 31. calling the play. And they do that frequently. Check off at the line. Senior quarterback, and what a throw. It's complete to Eric Morris. Short game, though. About the 35. Game of about four. Little guy, 180. 5'8". Senior, Shallow Water, Texas. And a good play that time. Sure handy tackle by Eric Hay, the sophomore from Peoria, Arizona. Yeah, and they spread it around the field. A lot of guys catch footballs in this offense. Eric Morris, you saw him there. Number three receiver coming in with 26 receptions on the season. So, Look for Graham Harrell to utilize all the weapons at his disposal. Guy that's brought one back for a score off a punt. Not as big as Amendola. Quick like Amendola, though, who's now on the practice squad of the Dallas Cowboys. On the play fake, Harrell with time. And uncovered, Baron Batch in the open field, and he's got a first down inside the 40. Brought down by Sane. A strong safety, but a blown assignment. Well, this is just the poise of a senior quarterback, and he stands back there. He's trying to go to this side of the field over here, and he comes back to batch on the clear on the far sideline. Nobody within 10 yards of him. Good job here by Asante of tracking him down and getting him. Otherwise, he's going to take that one all the way. They're on second down, they get to the line in a hurry. And Gary, we've been here before at Texas Tech, and we've seen him get people trying to get personnel in and out of the lineup. This time they take their time, but they try to freeze you by going to the line and calling the play there. Bring the motion man on the carry. It's a short game for Baron Bats, the sophomore from Midland. And the, the 144 yards a game. And, and the balance they have, when you can tag team it, you got Woods and Batch, and they're almost identical they really in yardage are. per game. And both of them bring a little bit of the speed, a little bit of the agility. That's the back that Mike Leach likes in his offense. And both those guys combining together, running the football, and they'll catch the ball out of the backfield as well. So pretty good balance. Two thronged approach there with those tailbacks. Is it time for Crabtree? Out there inside the 30, and he dropped the football. He tried to make a quick cut on Armando Murillo. A little spin move. But not only did he give up the, the first down, but he gave up the football. See him on the outside here, and you take a look at him. He's trying to make that play. Definitely does not make the catch, and Murillo comes up, makes a nice tackle on him. And Crabtree thinks that he can make plays all the time when he gets the ball in his hands. And that's the mark of a good receiver. He's got great size. 6'3", 215 pounder. As we can see on the replay, Morello had something to do with the tail end of the play. It was already coming out of the hands, but he made sure it was spiked down to the ground. The blitz is coming. They pick it up and look out. Crabtree with blocking up the middle. He should be able to take it in. It is a touchdown for Texas Tech and Michael Crabtree, the all-time touchdown leader in catches.
jailbreak screen, middle screen. I call it a scissor screen, and Michael Crabtree from the outside coming to the middle of the offense and gets that ball with excellent blocking out front, the parting of the seas, and just his speed takes it into the end zone. He has just surpassed the total of Jared Hicks with his 31st of his career. Corona. I'm talking about the kicker. Not the one that's needed with 11 or alive. Corona with the extra point and an early 7-0 lead on homecoming weekend in Lubbock. Zero. So the right play call, especially with the blitz coming from Nebraska, the middle of the field wide open for record setting. Michael Crabtree. Michael Crabtree with a 35-yard touchdown reception. So he breaks the record here. All-time leader at Texas Tech. Only a sophomore, but he is a third-year sophomore. So he's been here for three years. So a decision for this man down the road at the end of the regular season. Back deep for the Huskers. They're going to have Dennard along with Niles Paul, the deep man over to the far side. It is going to be on the line drive ball. A returnable type from the five. And a nice little lane. But shut down across the 25. He's pulled down by Bron Bird. Got our Hampton in. Touchdown of the game. And it's an easy call, an early call. And with that touchdown reception, sophomore wide receiver and Heisman Trophy candidate Michael Crabtree, the school's career touchdown leader with 31. A nice execution there of that, of that play. No doubt about that. An easy touchdown for Michael Crabtree. That is a new tech record and a good one. Jared Hicks is the one he surpassed with that 31st. Marlon Lucky stays in the backfield with Gans, but they do spread it a little bit more early. Two to each side, down by a seven. It's going to be Lucky. Good run on first down across the 38. Up to the 34 as we check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you, Joel. After that touchdown, Michael Crabtree received plenty of congratulations. They also came over here to the ride the bicycle, and they put a sleeve on his right knee. His right knee acting up just a little bit. He should be okay, though. Look good on that touchdown, huh? He looked comfortable. But, you know, timing's everything. And that defensive call by Nebraska was like jailbreak. They brought so many people after the quarterback, so it was wide open for Crabtree. Going to be second and short. And early, Nebraska has shown the ability to move the football. Wide. She tried to get it to Drew Young, the sophomore. Tied in. Now, this is a critical drive here, I think, for Nebraska early in the ball game. You got decent field position coming out. You got to answer what Texas Tech does, put points on the board and try to get some momentum offensively and get the ball out there. And you, know, you can take, you can be deflating with your football team, especially when they can score quick like Texas Tech just did on their previous drive. And you don't want to put the defense back out there right away. First miss for Joe Gans, who starts the game fourth and five for 27 yards. Graham Harrell, five of eight, 76 yards. Tech is coming off a game, though, where they had better than 600 yards of total offense on the road last week. Needs two. And a little screen, a kick out. It works. Man, he hits a first down to Nate Swift. So that's three catches already, and he was only 20 away from overtaking Johnny Rogers. Yeah, watch Mike McNeil, number 44, the tight end, come out and get the kick out block right here in front of him, and that's exactly what you want right there, and allows him to go inside of that. First down now, clicking here for Nebraska. And actually two, I'm trying to give Nate one extra. He is that good. Two, and so put him right at 18 away from Johnny Rogers' school record, 143 coming into the game. And the win, they may need 20 from Nate today. It's a first down. Lucky, weaving his way up the middle. And altering it well for about the to the 48. And one of the keys I talked about here for Texas Tech defensively is to make Nebraska to be a one-dimensional offense. If they're able to throw the football and run the football, kind of a blended style of offense, I think that kind of plays into the personnel that Nebraska has offensively right now with, with Joe Gans and company. And you got tailbacks back there, Marlon Lucky, that can run the football. Swift and Peterson do a good job catching it. But I think they need to take one of those away. And Ruffin Neal right now is just playing base defense up front here against this Husker offense. It's second and six. Huskers have been able to run the football. And Lucky. Making the miss out of the backfield, but drops short of the first down by a little more than two yards. So Marlon Lucky getting it a lot early. He's got five carries already. 
for 28 yards. But that bodes well for Nebraska. A game of keep away, and I'm not big, and I've told you I think time of possession here is the most overrated stat in football, especially against a quick striking team like Texas Tech. But if they can't get the ball, they can't score. That's exactly right. You've got to hold on to the football. I think it's imperative to get first downs offensively for Nebraska today. You just want to limit the number of touches they have, limit their offensive possessions. It's third to deuce. Gans on the roll. He can run for the first down. And he'll take a hit, but he'll get it. And the interesting where they spot this football. Needing to be just inside the 46-yard line. And they spot the ball right at the mark, so it looks like it might be a first down here for Nebraska. Good job by Joe Gans running around the edge. He's the one who can see where he needs to go, and he needs to get just inside the 46-yard line, and he's going to run out of bounds. Pretty good pop here from the linebacker. Is that the... Yes. Yeah, just popping around. This Marlon Williams. Hitting him out of bounds, the weak side linebacker. And he covered Mike McNeil well. He was caught kind of in the middle. He had shaded McNeil that side. And then he had to come up and try to get the quarterback. They get it by the length of the football. First down, Nebraska, in Texas Tech territory, inside the 46. McNeil is the motion man. Fake it to Healy. And it is McNeil, the tight end. And they don't go to the tight end often. They've had good tight ends for a long time in Nebraska. It's down outside of the 39. McNeil on the catch, the young man. Kirkwood High School in yeah. St. Louis at 6'4", 240. You know, I think this defense for Texas Tech is much improved, Joel, and I think Ruffin McNeil, what he's brought us, brought it, he's instilled a little bit of confidence with these guys. What they've done a good job is getting their hands on the football. Ten interceptions and three fumble recoveries on the year. They're in the plus six turnover area margin right now, so they're opportunistic defense. They play with that swagger, and I think it's really helped them. Now on second and short. Healy can't spin away. So it's going to be third still. About two, two and a half in our advanced auto parts. Big 12 South standings. Well, Texas is one by 10. What was it, 45-35 the final? Yes. So Texas wins at the Cotton Bowl over Oklahoma. What a battle that was. I thought it was going to be a one or two point game, but Texas, they made the most of their opportunities late. Open eye on a long touchdown run late in the game. So that's the first loss for the Sooners. Oklahoma State tonight at Missouri is a big game, to say the least. And the only other unbeaten team on the field here, Texas Tech in the Big 12 South. Yeah, I believe Texas Tech has a chance to go undefeated into the Texas game. It's going to be a test against Nebraska, especially. With Nebraska losing their conference opener, trying to avoid a second straight conference loss to start a season for the first time since 1968. So some real challenges for Texas Tech, but they've got the early edge. It's third and short as the Huskers use their first time out of the first half. They're bringing out of the huddle with a single set in the backfield. And a two tight end formation. And it's Hilo. He's got the first down inside the 35. Little shift and slide to the left. Got it for him at the end of the play. The sophomore from the Bay Area does a good job. Good job there. Nebraska converting on third down, keeping the ball away. We talked about keeping it away from Texas Tech and just churning out first downs. It's a good job by Joe Gans utilizing the timeout that needed to get things set up. But the big play belongs to Texas Tech, and it's a record-setting play for Michael Crabtree. So seven on the board. That belongs to the Red Raiders. Homecoming weekend in Lubbock. End of the first 15 minutes and a 7 0 lead for Texas Tech. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Suzuki. Start of the second quarter in West Texas and a 7 0 lead for the Red Raiders over the Huskers. And have joined us just a few minutes ago and missed it earlier in the game. Michael Crabtree sitting on 30. Number 31, it's a record setter, surpassing the totals of Jared Hicks. So the new all-time touchdown leader in Red Raider history. And welcome back to Lubbock, Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox. Muggy day, but a good day for football as long as the rain stays away. And a nice drive going right now for the brass corners to start the second 15. They've got our Texas Tech's 15, or 35, rather. They started back with their own 26. Helu waited for the block and went inside that little kickout block for five. There's a guy that showed patience. He's only a sophomore from Danville, California. Played last year and saw extensive times a true freshman. Just trying to get a little bit of a zone play there on the offensive line to 
gets a little, little separation, then the back has to find the gap. He did a nice job, gets five yards on first down. It was back to back. How would you like top 10 teams back to back weeks? Mm. It's only the second time it's ever occurred in Nebraska history that they've had to face back to back top 10 teams. Last week, Missouri, number three team of the nation, number seven this week, Texas Tech. Tons of time. Fans waited. Lucky's available. First down, 15 yard line of Texas Tech. Good pocket protection. It was good protection. Allowed Gans to stand back there and survey the offense. Will receivers down the field? He's trying to go to his left, look to the left first, but then he's going to come back to his tailback coming out of the backfield. And Lucky does a nice job, gets past the linebacker and gets to the second level of the defense. So, first and 10 now at the 15 yard line. So let's see how they do in their first trip in the red zone today. Uh, they spread the defense. Three wide receivers set. Swift is in the slot over on the high side. Now they move the tight end. Lucky waving his way. He gets another four. So that's six carries now. 32 yards early for Marlon Lucky, the senior from North Hollywood from Los Angeles. They can run the ball. It's going to be an interesting afternoon. And the numbers so far this season, Marlon Lucky. Last year, he was the primary receiver out of the backfield, though he had 75 catches. That eclipsed a record in Husker history for a single season. Yeah, Richard Jones getting the start there. Defensive tackle for Texas Tech. Ray John Henley not able to play in this football game, so a little bit of changing up front for Texas Tech on the defensive front. It'll be second and just shy of six. Lucky goes inside, makes a miss. He's short of the first down by a yard. Marlon Lucky, the ball He's down carrier. to the six-yard line. Needs to get it inside the five. Well, this defense here is not responding. Nebraska's doing a good job with his zone block. They just all step to the near side and pick up on man. And then you have your tailback, and he's going to read it back here. He's going to see he's got leverage to come back inside. Good job by Lucky at being able to find him some holes in defense to get, the, get some good positive yardage. So most in on the ground on this drive for Joe Gans. Now they bring in the steal first time. Matt Castillo going for the first down, spins, he's got it inside the five, first and goal, so quick Castillo, the guy that has put the ball on the ground, and that's his only problem because he's got a lot of talent, sophomore from LaPorte, Texas. And he's got the size, Joel, that they want, 240 pounder to come downhill and bring a little pop there, so that's what you're able to get, get that short yardage first down, get Billy with Castillo. They look here and see the block kick out. So he gets inside behind them, but he's going to have people in the hole, but he's got to make somebody, move somebody out of there with his size. So now it's going to be with Lucky over there on the sideline of the big power back in the backfield. The single is quick to steal. As you mentioned 6'1", 240. Will they keep it the ground? Spreading the defense with three wide receivers. Castillo putting it back in. Touchdown, Nebraska. Oscars, very impressive. On a 74-yard drive. Well, if you're an old-time Husker fan, you'd like to see running the football and running it well. That's what Nebraska did on that drive, and they really showed their promise up front with their offensive line doing a good job of making, moving people out of the way, moving the defensive front for Texas Tech, and allowing the running backs to get inside those holes, and that was a big hole that time for the tailback Castillo to get into the end zone. Took eight minutes. That's also a key that Texas Tech didn't have it for those eight minutes. Yeah. Henry's never missed, and now he's 66 of 66 on extra point tries in his young career. To the Huskers, tying it up on homecoming weekend in Lubbock. Nebraska just hung a very impressive 15 play, 74 yard, yard drive on Texas Tech. They've tied it at seven. It's an Iron Connors football Saturday. Twin Bill continues. UCLA trying to pull off the upset in Eugene, Autzen Stadium. Good luck. Oregon Ducks Pac-10 showdown starts at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific. Presented by Acura in high definition. The Ducks, they've got some talent. That's why I was surprised because they do have that much talent that they weren't in it with USC. USC USC's a very good team. Yeah, they can run the football with those two men. It will be big help to them in that football game. Moore brings it back. And up the back of his own man who slowed him down. For Ron Moore, who takes it outside of the 30 to the 32 on the return. As we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Jim. All right, Joel, how about that offensive line in Nebraska? Those big guys.
drives really opened a nice hole for Marlon Lucky and company. Gave also uh, plenty of time for the quarterback to throw. And look at Slauson right there getting up number 70. Come on down here, Dave. Look at this. I tell you what, Gary, if you lined up against him across from him on line of scrimmage, a little intimidating with that black eyeshadow, what do you think? He looks mean. He looks nasty. He looks ready to play. Looks like an offensive lineman. <laughs> Colorado Springs senior, honorable mention, all Big 12 last year. And what they did on the ground may have sent a message early to Texas Tech. I'm talking about the way it's direct snap to Crabtree wins it off. It never got to Graham Harrell on the carry past the 35. It was Baron Batch, but you don't see that very often, a direct snap with the quarterback in the backfield going to a wide receiver, Gary. You don't see that a lot, but uh, trying to get a little bit different look here for Nebraska to deal with. It'll be second and about seven from the 35. Four minutes gone. Here in the second quarter. Big hole. And down the sideline, look out. Batch inside the 30. They've got an angle and barely get him down. And a touchdown saving tackle by Larry Asante, the strong safety. But a huge lane to run through. Well, everybody's going to go to the far side of the field, which is the wide side. But Baron Batch comes back to the near side and Watch the kick out block here. Get him outside and go. That's what you need to do. Get him kick turned in there and then Baron Batch down the sideline. And Asante is second touchdown saving tackle of the game with his speed. So it's going to be first down to the 16. Shannon wants to take over in the backfield. The senior from McKinney. Harold will pop over the middle. And his wide receiver paid, didn't he? Tremaine Swindoll, the redshirt freshman from Oklahoma City. And the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com. At home with the O. Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox in West Texas. Just about an hour drive from the New Mexico border. And the wind is whipping this afternoon. We had rain this morning. More rain in the area. And hopefully we'll get a break on that. It'll be second and about four. Greatness is single to a bunch three to the opposite side. And on the comeback trail, nothing available there. Crabtree slipped down trying to make his cut. So a very quiet start. Yeah, he caught Michael the, Crabtree. Caught the ball, was made about a couple of yards, and then he comes backwards and loses a couple because of his footing. Graham Harrell getting the ball to him on a little wheel right there, and he just loses his footing. The turf may be a little bit slick. We'll talk about the rain this morning we had here. I'm not sure if it's completely dry down there on the field. It's a loss of a yard back to the 11. So 24 of 28 on the red zone opportunities with 22 getting to the end zone. The fifth highest scoring team of the nation held to seven so far. They averaged 48 a game, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. So looking at third and five. Can't break that tackle. Good play. That's good defense it's, by, it's by Nebraska. It's complete, but Nebraska's secondary came up big. A pretty good job coming inside. It was this Detron Lewis getting the football, I believe. Lance Texas Tech, Graham makes Harrell. The play. And they're all getting the tackle there on him, so hopefully he's trying to inspire his defense. Good defensive stand here would be uh, huge for them. Going to force a, force a field goal. And Corona's not been automatic. He's trying a 26-yarder. He's only two of six. True freshman from Beaumont. Trying to go up by three. And he gets the short one. So a 26-yard field goal after the long run by Baron Batch. And a long run of better than 40 yards. They couldn't get it into the end zone. Nebraska forces Tech to settle for the field goal from Corona at a 10-7 lead now for the Red Raiders. Dennard winning back deep. And also back against Niles Paul who couldn't handle it. And Paul will stay in the end zone. Wise decision. So Nebraska's got it. First and 10. 
at their own 20 yard line. And tomorrow, the NFL on Fox returns with a doubleheader. Starts with Kyle Orton of the Bears taking on Matt Ryan of the Falcons. Then Tony Romo and the Cowboys battle Kurt Warner of the Cardinals. Coverage all starts tomorrow. Four drive one. Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. Nine o'clock Eastern, or nine o'clock on the West Coast, rather. New Eastern, high definition only on Fox. That would really make it tough on those people. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I think Sean Watson, the offense coordinator from Nebraska, needs to get the same kind of result he had from his offense coming after that last drive, taking it to the length of the field and using a lot of clock in the process. On the play fake, uncovered the tight end, Drew Young, and close to a first down. Well, they have to make a decision. When the quarterback's naked on that side, and you've been in that position before, Gary Reese. Well, when the run game works for you, and Nebraska in this game already has run for 52 yards, Joe Gans comes out the back door now. You got a choice to make. You cover the receiver, you go to the quarterback, and came off the receiver, and Joe Gans tosses it over his head. So nice, easy throw there to Drew Young, and a good, good gain on first down. Brings up second and about a foot. Yeah, tough call for the end on that side. Sandy Riley, a junior from Houston. So it'll be second or less than a yard. Marlon Lucky. He's got the first down. They've averaged for a carry on their first 14 rushes of the game. And they've got the first down out to the 33. And a little less than four that time. Well, one of the styles, I think, here for Texas Tech defensively that Ruffin McNeil has, has employed is, you know, kind of keep things in front of you. Don't allow the big play. And that's exactly what's happening here. You've seen a little bit of zone coverage in the secondary, not allowing big plays to get behind you. And there'll be some seams in that secondary for Joe Gans to throw the football and also running the football. How many people are you going to stack in the box? Nebraska's going to try to spread that out just a little bit with their formations to try to gain some advantage there. On first down, it will be Lucky. And, and Lucky consistently getting five there, Gary, has made the first man miss. The one who went low and missed him right around the knees. Yeah, Victor Hunter come in to play some middle linebacker there, and he tried to go low on Lucky in the backfield. Could have been a negative play there, but did not get a touch on the young man and finally got to four or five yards on the play. So that's what you want offensively. If you're able to run the football consistently, four yards a clip, that's a nice day's work. But as I said, time of possession, what an overrated stat. They hang on to it for eight. Granted, they tie the game, but in a less than a couple of minutes, Texas Tech regains the lead. The only thing it did was keep the ball out of the hands of the Red Raiders. So there's something to be said for limiting the possessions Texas Tech. as Texas first Tech short, defensively uses their first, first time out of the first time half. Time out on the field. Well, Nebraska has to avoid giving up the big play like we just saw from Baron Batch and Michael Crabtree earlier. Red Raiders with early three-point lead. Three-point lead for the Red Raiders as we walk you back to Lubbock. Very successful start, though, for Nebraska's Bo Bolini's Huskers. You look at the resume for Bo Bolini's first head coaching job. He had been in Nebraska before, back in 2003, as their defensive coordinator. Quick hitter outside to Niles Paul for good yardage. Close to a first down. And right at the marker, he may have the first down. He does. But back to Bo Bolini, uh, the opportunity there. And, and to be under an athletic director has been there, done that, won national championships. And all that those, has to help. Yeah, and all those NFL experiences as well play into his mentality, being a, an aggressive style of defensive coach. And everywhere he's been, he's had success. And so they expect to bring back here to Nebraska, you know, to this defensive unit. Yeah, out of Odessa Permian, he saw Ron Bird limp off the field. That's a blow. He's one of their leading tacklers. First down, Nebraska. They've got it across their own 44. Starting back at the 20. The motion man. Gets it, but nothing there for now as Paul lost a yard or two. But we had an opportunity to talk to Bo Pelini, to find out what it's like being back in Nebraska, and especially with an athletic director like Tom Osborne. Having Coach Osborne as the athletic director and, and around to give me his input, his advice, uh, you know, share his expertise, you know, the, you know, for myself, you know, once again, it's my first head coaching job. It's a invaluable resource for me and something I, I feel, you know, really lucky to have. They're lucky to have Coach Osborne back there. No doubt about that. He brings a lot to the table and a lot of experiences I'm sure he can show with it, share with his young coach. Time out, Joe Gantz. He's got Hulu in the backfield, but he looked at the safeties and all of a sudden, and now a flag, but they got the timeout before the delay of game call. Timeout on the field. So they've got one remaining. 519 left and a real good start for the Huskers on the road. We'll come back to Lubbock in just a moment. Hello, 
all season long champion apparel is going to be showcasing the history and traditions of the Big 12 Conference. Today, we highlighted Texas Tech champion. It's how you play. And right now, both teams at a high level in Nebraska surprising some people early. Huge underdog coming into this game. It's a second and ten outside their own 44. Looking for the screen, the dump off the lucky. And boy, he's not bumped out of bounds by Jamar Wall. He's got the first down a lot more. Man, Lydon Murtha, the big offensive tackle, the right tackle for Nebraska, number 76. Watch him get out here. Big guy pushes one forward, and then he gets out here, tries to get this block. He just misses Jamar Wall by a hair, allows him to get out there. So could have been a huge play for Nebraska, but nonetheless brings it up third and medium here. Take a look at the selection called here by Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator today. A good balance because on the season, 66% of their yards have been through the air. Last year it was 69%. It looked like Williams was jumping off. They got back in plenty of time, though. Now on third and about five. And plenty of time. Should run for it. Instead, throws for it. He's got it. Peterson's first grab of the day. The senior from Grand Island. Joe Gaines passed. Oh, he's Joe smart. what he was doing. He's no doubt smart. He's an academic All-American and does a good job. Coming back to his quarterback and so far in the season, came in here into the season with this 22 receptions on the year, averaging over 12 yards a catch. So this is a nice route by Peterson coming back, finding the open area. Excellent job there by Joe Gans throwing the football. A former walk-on Todd Peterson. And a nice career that he's put together for the Huskers. So a first down outside of the 39 of Texas Tech. A little more than four minutes left. Here in the half. That swift in motion. Looked one way. Now Gans ad -libbing. Now we'll throw it away. Good move outside of the tackle box. So it'll be second and ten with 404 to play. And still one timeout left in the half for the Huskers. You know, that was a smart play by Joe Gans. They want to run the screen to the far side of the wide side of the field, but it was well defended by Texas Tech in the secondary. And instead of throwing the ball in the coverage, he decided to pull the ball down, throw it away, and live to play another down, not trying to force the football. That really helps his offense. And doesn't allow a potentially a big play for the defense with the turnover. Yeah, you know, what a start for Joe Gans. That's only a second incomplete. Pass. He's 12 of 14. 91 yards. Now everything's been underneath. His longest throw is only 15 yards, but still moving the football. On the handoff, it'll be Hilu. Really shut it down after a gain of four at the 36. And I really like the play call here by Sean Watson. Keeping things manageable. Run the football. Get two, three, four, five yards to pop when you can run the ball. Allows it to be a manageable throw here now for your quarterback. You talk about not long passes for Joe Gans. Well, I think that's kind of his strength, Joe, is he's able, Joel, he's able to throw the ball down the field for just 10 to 12 yards. Get what you can from the defense. You don't have to make a home run play every time. So now third down. On their third down try is Nebraska. A real nifty five of six. Collapses. He's short of the first down on the reception by Swift, his third grab of the game, but he's short in a decision. You go for the 47-yard field goal or on fourth and less than a yard, do you gamble? Well, and Brandon Williams, the defensive end, comes and he almost knocks his ball away from Joe Gans on the pressure on the, on the far side. Watch Williams come around here and get there. We're going to see the reception first. He's going to get to the first down. He's getting around to the 29-yard line. It's going to be almost a yard short. But almost a strip there before Joe Gaines stepped up in the pocket by the defensive end, Brandon Williams. So now it's going to be fourth down. And the big back's in. They push him back, and it will pin upon the spot. It's going to be a spot. Still got, he got to the mark. And he's right short of the 29 where he needed to go. And I don't think that's going to be it. He didn't get a great spot. And I think that's going to be a, four, a first down for Texas Tech. And credit Brian Duck in the middle linebacker stepping up there and putting a hat on a hat and knocking the tailback back. And we talked about the size from Castile, 240 pounds. That's a big man you got to knock backwards and I'll bring the change out to take a look at it. But I think it's going to be a little bit short of the, excuse the eagle eye that we have up here. You want to challenge the spot? Get that kink out of it. <laughs> they hold by about an inch or two. So important where that lines and put his foot down. Let's head downstairs to Jim Knox. All right, thanks, Joe. Run Raider fans happy about that big defensive stand. Also happy about what's coming up at halftime. College football Saturday studios will join Mike Gorber and DeMarco Farr. And they'll go over top 25 scores and highlights at Texas.
But Jim's improvising, getting written down for him here on the sideline. That's good stuff. <laughs> First down, Texas Tech. After the stop on fourth down with 2.37 to play. They've got two timeouts on the board. Middle of the field. Unaccounted for. Look out. And Britton pulled down from behind. So the big play has been given up by Nebraska in the first half. That is the third big play by Texas Tech. After the batch run, the Crabtree score. Well, I tell you what, it all starts with Ruffin McNeil call a timeout to get his defense ready, and they responded. They took Nebraska, their, their aggressiveness away, and then the offensive line does a great job of protection for Graham Harrell, and how do you get uh, that open? Ed Britton here catching the football with nobody around it. Nothing on the carry at all. So it'll be second down and 10. Shannon Woods buried right out of the backfield. And that's how quickly things can change. Momentum, you get a defensive stop, and here's the throw again. And, down the field, nobody within 10 yards of him. And again, Larry Asafi showing his speed coming and making his third touchdown saving tackle of the ball game. So that's nine completions, 139 yards, and 12 throws for Graham Harrell. Passing situation here on second and 10 to the 14. Underneath. It's Lyle Leong who's getting more snaps. He's down to about the eight. It's gonna hurt, his, gonna hurt his average, Joel. Personal foul, <laughs> roughing the passer on the defense number 93. Half the distance of the goal, automatic first down. So they move it. That's called on Emma Domkin Sue, the junior from Portland. And that's one of the things that Bo Pelini's been trying to clean up is unnecessary penalties, personal fouls in particular. And we'll see Sue here, number 93, get to the quarterback. Here's the reception first. Got six catches now in the season, three touchdowns, part of that. The two most penalized teams in the Big 12. Carroll with Woods. Up the middle, touchdown, Texas Tech. Well, if you have missed cues defensively, missed assignments in the secondary, Texas Tech is going to make it, make you pay for it. And Graham Harrell, an experienced quarterback, throwing the ball down the field, getting great field position. And watch the offensive line here. Just make holes there for, for Shannon Woods to get through the hole. Easy touchdown here inside the five-yard line. Corona in for the point after. Tries to give Tech a 10-point advantage on the highest snap. Go to hold by the punter LaCour. So a 17 to 7 lead with a minute 18 play. A minute 18 left in the half. And our sonic flashback. America's driving a rivalry flashback. Texas Tech, Nebraska in Lincoln. You know, 21 to nothing lead early. Huskers charging back though. They were down by three scores. They took the lead with 10 minutes left. Zach Taylor, Terrence Nunn on the receiving end. Huskers. Had a field goal lead by four. It looked like it was over here. It looked like the Huskers sealed the win. But after the pick, they fumble it away. Cody Hodges makes a pay on fourth and two. Only 12 seconds left. Joel Filani and a shocker. 34-31 on the road. And they've only won twice against Nebraska. It's been the last two games against the Huskers. That was their first one. 70-10 was the other one. Cody Hodges, one of the long list of quarterbacks with Mike Leach here running this offense. And a lot of chemistry between all the quarterbacks that Mike's had here from Cliff Kingsbury, Cody Hodges, Sonny Cumbie, DJ Simons, all those guys, Joe, they still talk to each other on a regular basis. Corona kicks it away. And go to a down win. Now he's going to bring it out about three yards into the end zone. Got a lane over to the right side. Good move. Now turns it on up against Corona. There it goes and barely pulled down. Touchdown saving tackle. It looked like it was going to be a score. But Nathan Stone, or check that. For the Red Raiders, well, they've got a number 30 on the field, but they don't want list to do that. Well, first he's five yards deep. You should never run that out. But heck, make a play, young man, and he does. He just goes knife right through the middle of the Texas Tech coverage unit. And excellent job there trying to get him out of bounds. Otherwise, that's a score, but that's a huge momentum play. Texas, excuse me, Nebraska now with an opportunity to put points on the board with great field position after the return. And Gary, they've got 
to get at least a field goal out of this. After failing to get any points on that long drive that stalled at the 29 on fourth and less than a yard. Well, I think they need a field goal. They need to get around the 20-yard line and make it a comfortable kick for their kicker. Underneath complete to hold. Mentally Cole, the junior from San Diego. A little quick out and turn around. So they get about seven. They've got a timeout on the board. Plenty of time left. 63 seconds. Well, they've got a great kicker in Henry. You know, he's seven of eight for field goals this season. And 15 of 16 in his career. So he's pretty good, pretty uh, pretty accurate kicking the football. I'm sure they'd like to get a touchdown, though. But get as you thing mentioned, a little bit closer. they got to get it inside the 20 because he is working into the wind. So you don't want to make it a long one, a 40, 45 yarder. That's a fairly strict breeze now. It's by the tight end McNeil. Need about three for the first down. Nice pocket. And a hole coming up. As Gann slides out of bounds. I believe short of the first down, but the flag is going to send him back. Came from the umpire. And you lose Holding field position. On the offense, number 65. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Coming on the left tackle, the sophomore from Las Vegas, Mike Smith. And he came over to Nebraska as a defensive end, now playing left tackle for him. This is a started five games previous to this in his career as a left tackle for the Huskers. And we'll take a look at Mike on the left side up there. This thing unfolds here. I think it was a pretty good pocket. He's got his hands locked out there. And then just as you go away, holding that defensive end, pulling his jersey a little bit before he got called, Brandon Williams. Right now they're looking at a 51 yard try. That's the last thing they needed, trailing by 10. What are we saying at about 13? Now it's collapsing in another holding call. It'll come back. It was thrown by the referee, but it may be on the left side this time. 61, Mike Huff. Holding on the offense, number 65. 10-yard penalty. Yeah, left side. Second down. Huff, but Smith. Mm, two in a row here for Mike Smith, and I tell you, Bo Pelini's not happy about this on the sideline. Field position is going away for his football team, and you can't have that happen. We'll take a look here as they roll through. Watch the left side. There's Mike Smith right up there. Is that a hold up there, folks, or is this on the bottom side? Is that Mirtha, number 65? Excuse me, 76? You know, the right hand looked like it had some fabric. Well, what happens is that defensive end spins and goes away, and there's, there is fabric. It's grabbed, and that's what the, the officials are seeing. So all the way back to the 44 with 40 seconds left in the half. Four-man rush. Gans in trouble. And bought it away. Tried to get it to Paul. And the opportunity for the pick over there. Now third down here now for Nebraska, but still a long way. I don't think they're def they're not in field goal range here, Joel. They've got no. to get another 15 yards at least to have a reasonable chance here of making this field goal with just 30 seconds left in the half. Got to get it close to the 30. So you get a 47, 48-yard attempt. Now, I'm not sure you're thinking about first down here on third down. You have to get all the way to the 21-yard line. Just get it inside the 30 for them to get a, a reasonable field goal attempt. Pocket holds up. Good lucky. Make a miss in the open field. Dragging him. And Charbonnet held on for dear lap, a strong safety. So now it looks like about a 52 53 yard try. It's not a real pretty tackle by Daniel Charbonnet, number 10, the strong safety, but he does exactly what he needs to, and that, does, that doesn't that does allow Lucky to get away from him and to get that first down. Watch Charbonnet, he goes down low, gets that one foot, hold on, all right, I got you. Lasso, you get you to the ground, and not going to get big points for the style, but the, got him down nonetheless. The two seconds left of the half. And now Nebraska with one final try. And you got to believe they're going to throw in the end zone if they don't bring out the young man you were talking about, Henry, who's 15 of 16, lifetime. Well, what you want to do here is you want to make, make something happen. It's a decision time here, I think, for both Fellini, because, you know, you're not going to have, they're not going to have, there's only one play left in the ball game, or in the half. So they'll throw it down towards the end zone, I think. I don't think they'll try a field goal attempt. Well, Gary, if there wasn't this breeze, and it's a stiff breeze in his face, I believe they would go for it. 53, 54 yard attempt. Just get some points before you go to the locker room instead of throwing it up for grabs on a tip drill. But you know what, if I'm Nebraska, I'm really pleased with how the offensive has performed in this football game. Taking the ball, taking drives, you know, not allowing Texas Tech to have the football. The times that Texas Tech has had the ball, there's been some breakdowns. 
in the defensive unit for Nebraska, allowing some big plays, a big run, a big catch. That's allowed the field position for them. They've actually hung in there pretty well offensively. It is going to be Henry, and he's going to try a 53-yard attempt out of the hold of Jake West. A little punter into a stiff breeze. So the 53-yard attempt on its way. And will it make it? No. Talked about the win and knocked it down. What about two, three yards shot? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it would have been a good effort for him to get it through the gears there. And Henry gets it all he has. Very accurate kicker, no doubt about it. Had it set straight to go there, and we'll see it going to fall just short, two or three yards short. Good camera work there, guys. So no points for the Huskers. So the number seven team in the nation, a team that has been dominant in recent years at home, with a 10-point advantage at the half. The Red Raiders, 17 to 7. Let's join Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farnell, head of the studio for the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Guys. College Football Saturday presented by Suzuki continues in Lubbock, Texas. And at the break, it's a 10-point lead for the number seven team in the nation, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech over the Huskers of Nebraska. Welcome back once again. Joel Myers along with Gary Reese. The biggest difference in this game right now, the big plays that have been given up by Nebraska, if you give Texas Tech credit there, but also the little mistakes at the end of the half, the penalties cropped up again for Nebraska. Yeah, the penalty is still a problem here for Nebraska in this football game early on, but I think overall Texas Tech came out. They try to establish things early in the ballgame, and they have with their big play receiver. Michael Crabtree takes his inside middle screen, takes it all the way to the house, splits the defense of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. But overall, Nebraska, I think they hung in there very well in this football ball game in the first half. They did a good job except for a couple of plays. They opened the hole up here. You got a defense, uh, defensive hole there for Baron Batch. He runs down, makes a big run play, sets up field position, allows Texas Tech to score. And then again, Graham Harrell throwing the ball down the field to a wide open receiver. You're going to catch Ed Britton here catching the football and Asante has to make another tackle to save that. So, but the, the plays there in this, in this first half really going the way of Texas Tech. The penalties, look at there, four for 35. Those were critical, but the time of possession, keeping the ball away from Texas Tech, still a good way to do things here so they don't score so quickly on you. So we're ready for the start of the second half. And Nebraska's going to get the ball. Let's see if they can take advantage of what they did early in the game. And that was running and there was real sound drives, mixing things up well. And they've got Niles Paul back deep, waiting for the corona kick. And Paul had that 70 yard run to set him up. They didn't capitalize, didn't get points out of it though. Paul design return right, bangs his way just barely across the 20. It's time now for the Jack of the Box sideline report as we join once again Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Joel, you guys were talking about penalties with the Nebraska. Well, I talked to Bo Pelini, Nebraska head coach at halftime. He said that we're killing ourselves. We got to execute better, but those penalties just killed us. We're beating ourselves. Meanwhile, Mike Leach here on the Red Raiders sideline told me we need to get the ball more on offense. The reason why we didn't put up much, much points is because we didn't have the ball much. Nebraska's offense really controlled the time of possession, guys. Yeah, look where they're at. Time of possession means that much. <laughs> they come by 10. They did not take advantage of the opportunities presented. And just shy of the 21. Gans on the dump off to McNeil, the tight end. Man close to the first down. He's just short. So Mike McNeil, sophomore from St. Louis, with the grab. And they've looked at the tight end a little bit more. He had only one career catch coming into the season. And these are the possessions for Nebraska. They held on to the football, Gary. There's no question about that, but they didn't take advantage of it. Yeah, just got the one touchdown on the board. So they just need to keep executing like they have offensively. Continue to move down the field. They'll have to do it in a big play. But when you get down there with opportunity, you got to put points on the board against a team that you know that can score almost at will. Second at a yard for the Huskers. Marlon Lucky has the first down. He just got about a yard, yard and a half out of it. Well, I said to you early in the game, I don't even know we were on, I think it may have been a break. I said maybe the most, the least penalized team in this game will win it because they're, the, as we look at the leaders in the first half for Nebraska, and a, a nice average for Lucky and Gans, and still they're down by 10. But they both came in 11th and 12 in most penalties in the Big 12. And all of a sudden it came back and it burned Nebraska at the end of the half. Yeah, those offsides, or excuse me, those holding penalties against. Their left tackle, Mike Smith, really huge in that last drive. Lucky breaking tackles. Marlon Lucky into the secondary, spun down for a first down. Got about 10 and a half, 11 yards on it. He was the catalyst early in the game. 
you know, early in the season, they were actually using Joe Gange with some option play, allowing him to run the ball. He hasn't run the ball yet today, but Marlon Lucky picking his feet up, getting through the hole and doing a good job of getting to the secondary. And that's what you want to have, some gashing runs there. That's 10 yards plus. Gets another first down for Nebraska. From the 42, first down, Huskers. And they put a scare as Halu wrapped up. After again, only two can they put a scare on the Red Raiders after this first drive of the second half. Looking back at your keys going into the game for the Huskers. Well, defensively, I thought that they did a good job against the offense. And Mike Leach throwing them down on first down. They did, did that. One of three. That's pretty good. But a clean game. They got to get an X mark there because they didn't have not been clean. They got the penalties. Shoot themselves in the foot. Some miscues in the secondary. They can clean that up, though. They've got plenty of time to do it. Only down 10 points. So last week, they faced number three, Missouri. This week, number seven, Texas Tech. And a much better job so far this week as it's thrown away. And Gans took a shot at the end of the play. So now it's going to be third and long, third about eight. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Shot with the company that supports college football. Overstock.com. At home with the O. Well, look for Nebraska to try to find to fit somebody within the seams of this defense. You're seeing a lot of zone coverage by Texas Tech in the secondary. Look for a person on the perimeter run. Up the hash marks, in the seams between the safeties and the cornerbacks. So in their first road game of the season, this late in the year, Nebraska facing a third and eight from the 44. Did a good job on third down, and get it done again. It's a first down, mentally Colt on the receiving end. It had to be a bullet from Gans. There wasn't a lot of room in the coverage. Well, excellent job there for Joe Gans of surveying the defense. And on the outside, you're going to have one receiver going to come down and work in the zone of the defense like I talked about. And Joe Gans is going to find him for a nice gain here. Excellent job. You got three receivers at the top and bring one inside. Nice job of taking that and getting the, getting the first down and then some. Joe Gans got to be happy about his receivers responding for it. So the drive that started deep in their own territory, just across the 20. First down to the 40. And a good little jump shift. Halo out close to another first down. Best cut we've seen for the big back. Six even, 215 pounds. Sophomore from Danville. And that's what the zone play allows you to do, Joe. Allows you to take it play side, which is front side, and then cut back if you see the defense over pursuing to the football side. And you're going to see Helu come down and make a play. Now watch the backside wide receivers come down and make blocks. And it's a design play to get behind these guys on the cutback. Excellent job of making Texas Tech overcommit to the front side and take it back to So another first down for the Huskers. They've got 14 first downs now to seven for Texas Tech. The numbers do lie, but they think. They cleared up the big player, and that's what's killed them. Joe Gans over the middle, taking a shot. It was Hilo. He held on. Sandwiched there by McBath, the safety. Yeah, but Hilo sets himself up very well for this to make this catch, Joel. And the route is really what sets it up for him. So Hilo, as he comes down the field, watch on the right side, seeing the move they made to the outside, and then comes inside. Takes a pretty good shot there in the secondary from Darcel McBath. So another first down for the Huskers. Strong drive to start the second half with the 17. A little more than four minutes gone by. Quick one, push him to the corner. Peterson's got it. And it takes him for, it's like a good run. He got about four out of it. Well, Peterson, 6'4", 215 pounds. So, you know, he can match up with any of those cornerbacks out there and use his physical size, as he did there on that play, to get two or three extra yards, brought it down, and just contact the defense as well. So, good job here by the Huskers. Moving it, throwing the ball in the perimeter, using the run game, spreading it out. Sean Watson, the offense player, I think, calling a very nice game so far. So, they're keeping Graham Harrell on the sideline. But they're not doing anything when they have it. And I'm talking about points on the board. That is the key. Halo shifting up the middle. Big hole. Breaks the tackle inside as he kicks the shoe. Inside the eight. Down to the seven. Give him the six. So he picks up the shoe. Heads over to the sideline is <laughs> bring the other back. Well, go if you have to. If you don't have a shoe, that's okay. Just run without it. But cut back inside the hole. And Hilo and Lucky both have done a nice job of finding the open area in this Texas Tech 
defense, so it brings up a first and goal now at the six-yard line. That is 96 yards on the ground now on 23 carries for Nebraska. And they finally get into the end zone on one of their long drives. Because they've had a couple in this game. It's Marvin Lucky. A little more than two, give him close to three. Second and goal from there. Now just so. trying to punch it in here, be physical, and I think this offensive front for Nebraska is doing that. And you've got to do it. You know, they got Murtha back this week, bring some energy, the right tackle, number 76. He's a big energy guy, and Slauson, well, before the game, he's the energy guy we saw on the sideline. Jim Knox talked about him. But offensive front trying to assert themselves against this Texas Tech defense. Heck, they're bigger than the defensive front, so they should be able to get some movement. Gary, they've had 47 snaps to 21 for Texas Tech. He just took a, took a look at Sean Watson there, the offensive coordinator. He's calling an excellent ball game, and really impressed talking to him this week about preparing this football team. Second and goal. Lucky. Boy, I would have loved to see a naked group that time. Easy from up here, isn't it? It'll be third and goal. No game for Marlon Lucky. Well, when you run Lucky the ball like that, Joe, Joe, Joel, it does set up those opportunities. Bring your quarterback, Joe Gans, on a bootleg or something like that, because the defense is going to have to, you know, respect the running game, which is what they're doing right now. I think this is definitely going to be a, a run pass option for Joe Gans, probably rolling to his left with more field to work with. It's another seven-minute drive for Nebraska, but do they get seven out of it? That is the key. Lucky, a single to the backfield, three wide receiver set. Nate Swift in the slot on the wide side. Looking at Peterson's side, and off his fingertips. Trying to pull it off with Jamar Wall with the coverage. Yeah, I think that ball's need to get there a lot quicker because Peterson had a chance to get in front of the defender. If the ball got there in time a little bit earlier, he's coming back this and the ball is high and outside. But if he'd have got that ball right there on his numbers, he did a nice stop and start on Jamar Wall, and he was open just inside the end line. But still an impressive drive here in Nebraska to come down. Got to put points on the board. Looks like you're going to do that again with Henry. A little more than an extra point try. It'll be a 21-yard attempt for Henry. He was just short. Final play of the half to 53-yard attempt. And he's got the chip shot. So that's the way it begins for Nebraska. A drive that started back in the own 21, but again, it stalls in the red zone, and they have to settle for three. Seven-point ball game in Lubbock. Laurent Moore will take it back at about the two. And torpedoed across the 20 at the 23. Mike Goldberg, where have you been with DeMarco Farr? Let's head back to the studio on the latest. Well, earlier we were watching the Red River rivalry and, of course, your game, Joel, and in the Pac-10 Arizona State. Rudy Carpenter picked off by USC's Kevin Thomas. He will take it for seven. Number nine, USC, leads 21 to nothing in the second quarter. It's been a long time since ASU has beaten USC, and it's been a good day thus far for Mark Sanchez. Joel. All right, thank you, Mike. So USC looking like the lofty ranking they deserved early in the season. They'll be a top five team, I believe, before the end of the year. Little shovel pitch, batch. That time they didn't get the big play. All into the 25, and we've seen that with, and usually at bats more than Woods. And the possessions first half. Well, definitely, they've done a decent job when they've had the football, had a couple of scores in the field goal, but one punt there to start the ball game. So they've only had four touches, and they put three, three scores on the board. That's what Texas Tech does. They take the ball down and they score. But Nebraska, doing a decent job to keep away so far. We are halfway through for the third quarter. Direct snap again. Crabtree. Detron Lewis into the secondary, breaks the tackle. Another big play for Texas Tech. He's already down, lost the football, but down inside for the 45 with the first down. So, a little gadget action in the backfield. I'm just trying to heavy sell the run there inside, and the defense kind of bit on it, and it allowed Lewis to come inside for the catch, and does a nice job of running after the catch. Kind of has a slip right there on the 45-yard line and goes down. Almost a fumble there on the play. The ball came out after he had contacted the ground, so a non-fumble. It's good for 31 yards, so the explosive plays have been long to Texas Tech. And in motion, Edward Britton gets it. Now, we'll get much. 
Good job defensively to stay at home for the Huskers. Gain of a couple. Look into the first half leaders for the Red Raiders. Now Graham Harrell, he's been sharp, 10 of 13 passing. You know, he's got the touchdown to Michael Crabtree, his 31st of his career here at Texas Tech, and the all-time leader. And Baron Batson, a nice job with his efforts out there running the football. Now, those are the first half numbers, but on 12 completions because of the big play, the 31-yarder. To Lewis, it's already 177 yards on 12 makes and 12 completions. So Graham Harrell still putting up real good numbers. Limited time on the field. Middle is available. He finds Eric Morris for a first down. But no pressure right now out of the gun on Graham Harrell. Now going to revisit our principal financial edge. Look here at Texas Tech in this football game and what they needed to do. I talked about them being a first down machine. Well, they'll move the football when they have that. They get a click there, but I think they haven't gotten this done. They haven't made Nebraska be one dimensional because they have had to. They've been able to run the football and throw it effectively short yardage wise with Joey Gaines. Harold checking off at the line. A little confusion with Shannon Woods in the backfield. First down. Edward the junior from El Paso. Picking him apart now in the secondary. So it's not how long you have the football, it's what you do with it, as we've seen before with Texas Tech. Well, and gotta, again, they barely had it two minutes now. You got to play proper leverage in the secondary. You've got an inside route, Anthony West, just a sophomore cornerback going up against him and allows an inside re release there for an easy throw for Graham Harrell. So first down inside the 20. Drive that started back at the Texas Tech 23. It's taken a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> Batch. Into the secondary again. On the hook of his blocker and a flag of the play. He's got a first and goal. He rode that horse down the field, didn't he? And that horse was number 65, Louis Vasquez. <laughs> Big guy from Corsicana, Texas. 6'6", 340 pounder. Was it a face mask at the end? Personal foul. Face mask on the defense at the distance of the goal. Automatic first down. Now we'll take a look here at the end of the play. We're going to see the face mask there on Baron Batch, the left hand. Going to get there near the face, near the near the face. And now, yeah, but when you got a big guy that can run and make a block on the outside, watch Vasquez number 65 get out here and make contact. So it's a first and goal at the four. They keep Batch in the backfield. And is it Batch? Yes. Harrell, corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Adding to his record. And will they give him the score? It looked like the catch. Yes. Michael Crabtree. Touchdown number 32 to add to his Texas Tech record. A good job by Michael Crabtree of going into the end zone and getting some separation. He pushes his defender back midway in the end zone. He stops and comes back to the outside and watches footwork there. That's actual NFL quality there. So he gets two feet in the ground in the inbound. So excellent throw by Graham Harrell. A nice reception by number five. So seven plays, 77 yards, and what we've been talking about from the very beginning of the telecast. As Nebraska's done a good job holding on to the football, but hasn't capitalized. They've had it for eight and seven minute drives. Corona for the point after. That was a three minute drive for Texas Tech. 77 yards in three minutes, and they get into the end zone to make it a 20 point in ball game. We'll find out how the Huskies respond when we go back with 447 left in the third. set it up with a big run and they finish it off with their all-american michael crabtree on the touchdown pass from graham harrell and welcome back to lubbock corona kicks it away and niles paul the line driver turnable type from the two they've been vulnerable on the return team he had a 70 yard return and he takes it this time better coverage out to the nebraska 27. Well, Michael Crabtree on the outside is going to take it down the field, gets into the end zone, and Larry Asante, too much cushion there. This cornerback cannot get out there to him before the ball is thrown. Excellent timing by Ian Graham Harrell. Looks like you got both feet down, not just one. 
you know, all the credit last year was well deserved. And people have said, well, why isn't he going at a great rate this year? Well, obviously, they're doubling him more often. He's still third in the nation with 113 yards a game. Not too shabby. Hilo in the backfield. And Hilo. Good yardage again on first down. Takes it out to the 33 for a pickup of just about seven. Well, Joel, he's a known quantity, Michael Crabtree. You know, last year, the numbers off the charts, folks. 150 yards a game, 112, excuse me, 150 yards in 2007. This year, a little paltry, 112 yards a game. The receptions per catch, yardage per catch going down just a little bit this year. But still, the numbers, those are all American numbers right there at 7.6 yards per reception. And I mentioned he's third in the nation. Well, he leads the Big 12 in receiving with 113 yards a game. They empty the backfield on second at about three and a half, four. Good catch and cut. I like that move. Mentally cold, just a junior from San Diego. He's got a first down. So they have been able to move the chain. They've had the ball for 13 more minutes, but when they... It, they're great between the 20s today, aren't they? Well, they've moved the ball effectively offensively. They haven't put touchdowns on the board except for the one here in this football game. But overall, the Nebraska defense has not been able to hold up the big plays that Texas Tech has done offensively. Nebraska's defense, 82nd in the country coming in here to start this game. Carl Polini wanted a better effort, better execution by his defensive group. Hasn't gotten it yet today. Gans on the play fake with Healy. Underneath, Paul, Paul rather. Nobody close. And right at the marker. As we get another Jack of the Box sideline report with our roving man, Jim Knox. All right, thanks, Joel. What do you think Michael Crabtree did after scoring that touchdown? He came to the bench and congratulated the offensive line. Can you believe it? And look at number 76, Brandon Carter. You talking about a, a, a little intimidated? We talked about the offensive line in Nebraska. Brandon Carter, six foot five, around 325 pounds, and, and the, the eye makeup, the hair. He's got everything going on there, Gary. Uh, he's a good story. I talked a little bit about him with, the, with Chris Cook, the sports information director here from Texas Tech about about Carter and he told me a pretty good story I'll share with you here in a minute. Yeah he's ready for Halloween. Peterson <laughs> on the grab. He's got the first down to the 40. Well Carter he's a unique story in that he's so huge. He's 6'7", 350 pounds and actually went to teach a, a, a like a, a class, a young kid's class, almost a kindergarten type class. They walked in and he said he thought these kids were going to be yelling and screaming. They didn't say a word. I wonder why they didn't say a word. He's not intimidating. No. It is a classic time in Lubbock. Boy, the program under Mike Leach, nine years in now. 70 wins, only 12 away from Spike Dykes, the all-time leader. The option, haven't seen that. And he leaves, scrambles for a couple of extra yards down to the 33. So seven again on first down. They have moved the ball. They just have to do better in the red zone. Good job of play calling, changing things up. We haven't seen option today. They have run that this season with Joe Gans and I think that offensively they do need to find a way to get the ball more vertical now. Find a way to get the ball into the end zone and get you know, perhaps contest this secondary with a longer throw. They haven't attempted it all today. 53 snaps for Nebraska, 28 for Thank Texas you. Tech. So 24 points on 28 snaps. That is maximizing things for the Red Raiders. Gans on a second and short. Man, it'll be a false start. Prior to the snap, all start on the offense. Number 44, five-yard penalty, second down. But Joe Gantz now throwing for on a regular basis for 275 yards or more. In fact, six of eight, eight career starts, he's done that. Well, you see the numbers here that he's had this season. Early on, started out very well against Western Michigan, went down to New Mexico State. Well, they ran 330 yards in that football game. But Joe Gantz has shown that he's a confident quarterback. Now, a lot of this is still kind of that blend of the West Coast style of offense that they ran last season. A little bit different now with the spread offense and trying to be a little more um, in tune with the running game. So I think Deshaun Watson really trying to find a real identity of what he can accomplish with this Nebraska offense. It'll be second and eight because Steele into the backfield. Put about draw didn't fool anybody. He lost it on the way down and now potentially a late hit. A little celebration and a late hit. Dixon. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on his defense. Well, a great play here defensively for the Huskers, but it's going to all be negated because of sloppy play by the Texas Tech defenders coming down there late. Dixon got the sack, his seventh of the season. One of the leaders in the nation. But there comes the late hit. Man, with good reason, you, you throw that flag. Brandon Williams. 
So that upsets the defensive coordinator, Ruffin McNeil. And they've been a different team since he took over early last season. They've been a much more aggressive team. Yeah, he's a guy that's got him going definitely defensively. Ruffin McNeil, a little bit different attitude of what they've done in the past. Ben, but don't break style of defense again. A, a timeout here, I think, by Texas Tech defensively trying to survey what's going on on the field. And maybe the biggest surprise of all after that, that is their first penalty of the game. They're one of the top two teams in penalties in the Big 12 with the wrong direction. Tech took the timeout, used it for defensive purposes, trying to settle things down after the personal foul. And now Nebraska on their second series with the second half. They had to settle for a field goal their first try. And they got a 21-yarder from Henry. Now they've got a first down to the 28. Suzuki way alive, Todd Peterson. This is the kind of guy you want to pattern yourself after. This young man, former walk-on at Nebraska, and he's been involved in the offense. A lot today. Halu, little screen. Doesn't go for much. Charbonnet, the strong safety, the senior out of Houston, out of the Woodlands, making the play. He's made a lot of big plays for this team. Four picks, one of the leaders in the nation. That's He does a great job, I think, in the secondary. Kind of runs things back there now. And good job of running the football, making a play in space. That's what you have to do as a safety in this defense. Come downhill and make a nice tackle on the open field. So it'll be second and long, second and eight. Final minute of the third quarter, and a third quarter where it's only going to be three minutes of possession time for the Red Raiders. But let's see if in those three minutes that they outscored Nebraska 7-3 in the third 15. Gans in trouble, gets a nice block though. And available, nobody accounted for Peterson. Wow. Three-time academic All-American. As he's got it down to the 12 and a first down there. And LaRon Moore, who's been bringing him back today on kicks with the pop. Well, LaRon Moore decides to bring some leather here. Good job, play Kong here. Good job of blocking and pinning to the inside. Get your fullback to do that. But watch his hit, folks. Textbook. That's a perfect tackle right there. Yeah, yeah but Peterson jumps up. He, right. you know, he's, he's got game. the first down. That's all that matters. But now can they get into the end zone, trailing by 14. Crucial drive early in the fourth when we come back to Lubbock, Texas. And can the Huskers finally do something in the red zone? So that's the end of the third. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday. It's a 14-point lead for the number seven Red Raiders. And it's all presented by Suzuki. Welcome back once again to Lubbock as we get ready for the start of the fourth. Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox in our game summary. Crabtree, record-setting day. 32 career touchdown catches, all-time leader in Red Raider history. And the Red Raiders with a 24-10 lead, but Nebraska's got a first and 10 of the 12. Quick one outside Peterson. And a good tackle by Jamar Wall. Good let go. So that's where it begins in the fourth. And Gary, we've talked about it before. This is the key. Can Nebraska get it done deep in Red Raider territory? Well, red zone defense coming into this ball game. Texas Tech has done a good job. Nine of 15 attempts, only allowed six touchdowns, Joe, far in the, coming into this ball game. That's only 60%. The success there for offense is coming in here. Nebraska, they've had their difficulties too. It'll be second and 10 at the 12. With Joe Gantz, a senior from the Chicago suburbs. Little option action, Helu out of the edge. And Wall again, stayed at home on the play. Out of bounds at about the 10. It'll be third and eight. That's good assignment football by the defense. Coming off of get the quarterback, make him pitch a football, and everybody else playing downhill and kicking him out. Wall making a nice tackle there on the sideline. And the difference in college football, when you run it out of bounds this year, after it's reset, the, the clock rolls. They stop it momentarily. In the old days, and that's last year and before, it stayed stopped, just like an incomplete pass. Yeah, and it starts the play clock also, so that those two things set things in motion. The clock continues to run. Huge third down for Gans in the offense of Nebraska, trailing by two touchdowns. Flag down and a false start. Another penalty on Nebraska. That'll be their seventh of the game. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Number 72, five-yard penalty, third down. It's been a strange game so far, hasn't it? 
Well, when you've got things going against you offensively, I think that uh, Bo Pelini certainly feels like that there's some things going against his offense. Yeah, that's they've, than, changed, hey. they've changed left tackles. Mike Smith was in there who had the two holding penalties, and that was Javario Burks who got that false start penalty on him. So they've changed from their tackle who had the, the holding penalties, and guess what? The new tackle, uh, he got one also. And only one penalty on Texas Tech. Burks sophomore from Phoenix. He started three times last year as a true freshman. Now Gans on third and long. Underneath, they won't get the first and goal. It's complete to Swift, and Swift has not been a huge factor today, the senior wide receiver. Well, this defense, I think, has done a nice job of playing downhill. And this is Daniel Charbonnet, and he's the strong safety, and he's going to come off and make plays. He's reading the quarterback and coming downhill, making a good firm tackle there as the receiver comes across. So Nate Swift not able to run after the catch. Good recognition by the Texas Tech defense. It's rare when we do a game at Tech, and they've had the ball only five times. This is the sixth series for Nebraska. It'll be their second straight long drive, time-consuming drive, where they're settling for a field goal attempt. They got one, a 21-yarder. The last time from Henry, this is a 27-yard attempt. And it is it's a fake. Yeah, a fake, and there is the tight end. He can't get there. But first down, Joel. It'll be first and goal. He couldn't get to the end zone, but it is a fake, and Mike McNeil has the first and goal inside the one. So what a gamble and call, but a good one that was needed this late. Well, you got to pull all the stops out. Get your quarterback back on the field. Joe, you got some work to do because the field goal unit, hey, they utilize the fake to try to get something momentum here. This is a head coach call. See the holder pull it down and jump up. Actually, his knee down, he's down, and I don't think that's a college football rule. But nonetheless, he allows him to throw the football and almost gets it to the end zone. Big call there by Bo Pelini, the head coach. I'm sure it came from him, and Joe Gant's got to be happy to get back on the field. So the gadget play works. They were desperate for it. Now they can they finally get into the end zone. Quarterback sneak. Joe Gant looks like it. No official sign. Finally, touchdown Nebraska. We got a ball game. Uh, there's some Nebraska fans here this week came all the way down here to Lubbock and they're they're liking what they're seeing with this football team showing some resiliency on offense to do some different things. They like the play call there obviously the fake field goal opportunity with a chance to get a first down and now the touchdown. So a lot of momentum shift in this football game and it's going right back to Nebraska right now. This time Henry does boom it for the uprights. So the Cornhuskers putting it together finally. It took a fourth down fake and pass, and it worked. So Wesh, the holder, throws it. Okay, get it to the tight end, and finally Gans. Yeah, the pass on the fake by Jake Wesh, the punter, who was the holder. And then Joe Gans with the quarterback sneak. And all of a sudden, Nebraska putting a scare into the homecoming crowd here. Ned Lubbock, line drive by Henry. He's out of the end zone. And it was actually Adi Kunalik who did a good job to make sure that Detron Lewis and Jamar Wall wouldn't bring it back. It'll be at the 20, and let's head back to the studio for a game break. Mike Goldberg with the latest. Well, Joel, a crazy one in Starkville, Mississippi. Number 14, Vanderbilt, unbeaten on the season. Saw their starting quarterback, Chris Nixon, struggle. Michael Adams has just been intercepted. It looks as if Mississippi State is going to pull off the upset, and Vanderbilt will not start 6-0 for the first time since 1928. Keep it posted. All right. So, another shocker. Completion pass to 24 goes to Detron Lewis, just shy of the 25. And, and now that Oklahoma has been knocked off at the Cotton Bowl today, 45-35 unit here by the Texas Longhorns, what does that do to the rankings? And if Missouri, Missouri's at home to Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma State, number 17, a very good football team, and especially on the offensive side. Well, the one thing we do know, though, Texas is definitely going to move up. How far they're going to move up? Well, there's still some work to be done. LSU plays tonight, Missouri plays tonight. Should be a lot of football left today. It should be fun to watch. 
Shannon Woods short of the first down. So how big is this third down now momentum wise for the Nebraska side. Uh, third and one coming up as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Joel exactly right. This offensive line also the offensive team right here. A lot of momentum going on. Barney Cotton the offensive line coach sitting on the bench right now told his offensive line play clean now guys play clean and you got <laughs> big Mike McNeil number 44. He had a big group around him. They were yucking it up. He couldn't believe the ball came to him. And Mike McNeil caught the fake field goal. Took it down inside the one. Need a yard and won't get it. Believe it or not, three and out for the first time today as they shut down Shannon Woods. A good push up front there by the defensive front. Sued to Demacon. That upcoming Sue does a nice job of pressuring inside number 93 for that defense, getting into the backfield. And that's what allowed him to watch the push coming up right here. I'm going to get into the defensive backfield, and that's what made the negative play. So Sue coming up huge. Now, what kind of field does Nate Swift give to the Nebraska Cornhuskers? Jalen LaCour. Coming up with, well, he's only his second punt of the game. Having to use out. another timeout. Texas Tech. Second Texas. charge timeout. They've only got one second timeout out. left. Timeout on the team. tight affair with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. 10-20 free to play. Get ready. Should be a lot of fun over the last 10 plus. Stay with us in Lubbock. Cornhusk is ready to get the ball back only down by seven and Art Polaris Ranger presenting the hardest working player and it's Marlon Lucky 13 carries he kind of set it up for Nebraska he, he led them to believe they could run the ball early and they have throughout the game been very effective with the football Marlon Lucky does a nice job here running the football catching for him he's been a bit of stalwart back there for him did a nice job giving some pretty good production his Husker offense has done a nice job today and he's a, Talk about production. Well, Texas Tech, tremendous offensive performance. Well, they lead the nation in total offense. But guess what? Nebraska ahead of them in total offense so far in this football game. Red Raiders hunted away. And Swift calling for the fair catch stays away from it and should stay away. Had ideas after it hit the ground. So the Huskers, good field position. They're going to have it. Best field position to start a drive in the second half at their own 32 when we come back to love it. All right, here we go. Nebraska at the 32. Only down by seven. This is already a shock to me. Regardless of the outcome, this is already a shocker in my book. Five minutes gone by in the fourth. A little delay action, a play fake. Gans wants the bundle. He's got Nate Swift inside the 35, all the way inside the 30. Burning the D back on that side, Leron Moore. Yeah, playing zone coverage, two deep zone coverage, and Leron Moore is the near side cornerback. And Swift just gets down the sidelines, and between the safety, who's, who's occupied by a deep by a receiver in his area also. So Moore, you see him here on the outside, just misses a jam and just throws it up over the top. Excellent throw that time by the quarterback, Joey Cannes. So fifth grab of the game for Nate Swift. They held him. Only two in the first half. He picked it up. That's his longest catch by far, five for 70. Running the football with Lucky. He takes a pop after a gain of a little more than two, almost three. And then the balance in this offense, Joe, Joel, from being able to run the football and also throw the football intermediate passing. Lucky's done a good job. And in this football game pretty impressive I think for Nebraska to be able to control the clock control the line of scrimmage move the football down the field see the numbers there Nebraska out gaining Texas Tech offensively in this football game I don't think that's happened in quite some time to Mike Lee well it's a game of keep away but they're down by seven and we're going to have three consecutive possessions they didn't take advantage of good thing and they had a good thing going over the middle and behind the tight end. It was up for grabs because it was way behind Mike McNeil. Yeah, Darcel McBath, the, the safety, had an opportunity for an interception here. And McNeil, and I don't think he even saw the football coming. Joey Gans is trying to get it to his big tight end. You're going to see him here going across, but I don't think he sees the football. And McBath had the best opportunity for it. That's not a very good throw by Joe Gans. Swift to the far side. I thought he'd go that direction. And a big third down here now. It is third and a little more than seven. And Nebraska down seven points. This might be two down territory if Nebraska doesn't get it here on third down. 
Will the pocket hold up? Yes, it does. Gans underneath has it, and he's got a first down, Niles Paul. Excellent job by Joe Gans using his speed, getting out of harm's way. Pocket broke down just a little bit for him, but he slides to his right. And now his Paul comes up huge just around the 15-yard line and catches a football and falls forward for the first down. Watch Joe Gans move to the right. He sees pressure coming there on him, gets the ball out there. Open up, there's a receiver, but in the zone right in front of Charbonnet. And excellent job there by Joe Gans moving out of the pocket. Paul was basically begging for the ball. Not a bad idea. Joe Gans, 28 of 34, 253 yards. They have dominated the ball in the second half. Yep, down by seven, and that's what's hurt him, too, the penalties. That is going to be their eighth of the game, right, compared to only one. Ball start on the offense. Number 76, five-yard penalty. First down. Lyden Murtha, their senior right tackle. Yeah, and it's been tough moving the ball inside the red area here for, for Nebraska against this Texas Tech defense, watching the right side of the line of scrimmage. Quarterback bar got something both of them win. Yeah, you could have called Slauson it on and Murtha. too. So Joe Gans, Gary, you know well, he's standing up to tell him blocking assignments. That's what he was talking about. Uh, he's calling out guys on the, on the defense where they're at, and a little bit of miscommunication there, but now it's first and 15, and giving away precious yards. So inside the 20, Lucky in the backfield, little swing. Will they get the blocks? Out of the edge, Lucky inside the 10. Bolts out of bounds, close to a first down, inside the seven. And they get a great spot to the six. He's shy about only a yard, yard and a half. Oh, good job winning the corner offensively. You're going to get out to the outside. This is almost a little pitch pass outside to Lucky, who they win the corner, get around the edge of the defense. He gets inside the five yard, inside the six yard line. Excellent job there, moving the football with a different wrinkle. Overstock.com bringing you the first down marker. Overstock.com's price is so low you can afford to buy something for your friends too. Overstock.com at home with the O. It'll be first and goal. It's second and a yard and a half. And lucky the single in a two tight end formation. And Lucky going sideways gets it easily. It'll be first and goal between the two and three. Well, that's just power football. Getting behind your center, Jacob Hickman and Keith Williams, the left guard, going on the left side against this Texas Tech defensive front and get pretty good push there. Williams doing a nice job from the guard spot and this offensive front. Now, you take the time. You got first down here. I think you try to continue to run the football at this Texas Tech defense, and the more you run it out of defense, the defense can't stop your run game. It really takes the wind out of your sails. Now they try to tie it up. It'll be first and goal inside the three. You could say that Nebraska should be top by now or even in the lead. Toss lucky. Does he get the block outside? Not enough out there to help him. Good job of running the alley by Darcel McBath. Free safety coming downhill, getting inside out on Lucky and making a nice sure tackle around the two-yard line to get him out of bounds. Good position there by the tech defense. Clock moving inside of six and a half minutes to play. So Lucky's been their workaholic. Joe Gans on target to the tune of 29 to 35, and he hit for a high percentage against Mizzou last week. Through for 293, 267 so far today. Two yards away from tying things up. On a play fake, Gans, and wide open touchdown, Nebraska. Believe it or not, Drew Young, the tight end, out of Kozak. Two tight ends in the ball game for the Huskers, and they utilize both of them. Mike McNeil gets out first. He could have thrown that way, or he could have thrown to Drew Young. Both of them were open, but Young, I think, was more wide open in the middle of the end zone. Not even accounted for in the, in the Texas Tech secondary. Now the big extra point for Alex Henry. Clean exchange, and it's all even with only 6.06 to play. So last week, Missouri spoiled Nebraska's homecoming weekend and their conference opener. They're trying to do the same for the Red Raiders here in Lubbock. And we've got a wild 6.06 to play. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Suzuki welcomes you back to a stunned Jones A&T ballpark. We're in Lubbock. And almost 50% of his kicks have been like that. And he's downwind, so it's not anywhere near being brought out. 
It's out of the end zone. What a weapon. And a little energy, too, with this football team. Nebraska taking it down, putting points on the board. Watch the tight end's going to get out here, and the backside tight end is where he's going to go with it. Watch the play fake in here, and Joe Gans rolls around. Excellent play job here. The defense all bites on the play fake and allows the backside tight end, middle of the end zone. Boy, Joel, I think you could have thrown that one. I think I could have caught it, too. <laughs> First down, Texas Tech. And this is foreign territory for them. They have the football. They're about to touch the football, and they haven't added much. Last series, their first three and out with a punt. They only had it for three minutes in the third quarter. And a big run across the 30. And Darren Batch, the sophomore from Midland, moving the chains. Jim Knotts, what's going on down there? Hey, Joel, you, look, at, look at this on the sideline here. The Texas Tech defense look pretty worn out. They've been on the field a long time this afternoon. Time of possession definitely goes to Nebraska. Also on that last series, L.A. Reid, fine cornerback, out with an ankle injury. He's trying to get back in. Also, a, losing a top linebacker. Um, as far as L.A. Reid goes, he could be back on the field shortly. All right. Gain across the 34. Thanks, Jim. By Baron Badge, it'll bring up second and six. Oh, Talked about time of possession. I think it's 38 minutes or yeah. so for uh, for Nebraska in this football game, and right at 20 or so for for Texas no, Tech. No, it's it's 38-20 before this snap on the first down here to 15-34. 15. Well, five plus to play. We are tied at 24. It was 24 to 10, Texas Tech. Early in the second half. It's lost and almost intercepted in and out of the hands of the strong safety Asante. Well, Asante's been all over the field, Joel. He's made some game, some touchdown saving tackles, and now a chance to get the football in his hands. And Graham Harrell tosses him one over the middle of the field and gets away from the intended receiver, pitched away and almost right there on the spot to make the catch, but just can't pull it in. Whew. That was upset in the making if he hangs on. They're tied at 24, and now they're only one of four in the third downs, Texas Tech. Looking at a third and a little more than five, almost six, and Nebraska time out. takes Nebraska. their first, first time, time out now. of the second, second half. <laughs> so the Huskers and Carl Polini with the defensive unit ready to talk it over and see what they're going to do. Well, Graham Harrell in nice company. Playing better than 5,000 yards last year. And when you look at the guys that have been able to do it, the quarterbacks in NCAA history, three of the six that have accomplished that have played right here for Mike Leach. Yeah, Mike Leach has got this offensive system that these guys flourish in. You know, I don't think it's so much as a system as these guys have really executed so well with what they've done as a, at the quarterback position here. Graham Harrell, just one of them, B.J. Simons, and also Cliff Kingsbury. So that's a pretty good trio to be in, be in with and at 5,000-yard club. It's a short break for the Huskers for defensive purposes. And there should be a look of concern for Mike Leach now. Gans has been on target since the beginning of the game. He hit his first six before an incomplete pass. That was like Mizzou last week. He hit a first eight. So now the ball game for Texas Tech offensively. Can they keep the drive alive? Because you got to believe when Nebraska gets the back, they're going to try to pound it and chew clock. On third and five and a half, six. Shovel pitch. It's Woods. Did he get there? No, not close. Didn't fool Nebraska. Well, don't be surprised here. Mike Leach may go for this on fourth down. He has done that time and time again. And I tell you, if I'm a football coach, this is the time where I punt the football. Mike Leach is keeping his offense on the field. Heck, if you don't come up with this, you're going to give Nebraska a short field to work with. Short field? They're in field goal territory downwind. Chance to win the football game. I'm not sure I agree with this call. They're 58% on fourth down this year. Talk about guts. This is fourth and just shy of four. Harrell trying to get him offside, did he? No. Can he get it done now? Wide open, Michael Crabtree into the secondary. Beats Morello for a first down. What a gamble. Well, you absolutely have to think that Morello was looking in the backfield and thinking, hey, they're going to throw a penalty flag here or something. How do you not allow, not handle Michael Crabtree on the bottom of the field? Morello's just looking his eyes in the backfield and my goodness, this is a this is a big gap by Nebraska's defense in the secondary. A couple of those today, and Harrell finds his his All-American receiver out there for a huge play. Well, first down all the way to the 17. It's Woods. And 
Lasso as he takes it down inside the 15 to the 13. Brought down by Hay. It's still a huge call by Mike Leach. Huge. Forced down inside of his own 35-yard <laughs> line to go for the, the go for the, the first down and more poorly got a huge play out of it. Well, we've said it before uh, on our Big 12 coverage. He's always reminded us of kind of a mad professor. All he's missing is the lap coat. <laughs> <laughs> it's second and six. Baron Batch takes over the backfield next to Harrell. Big hole over to the right side. First and goal, Texas Tech to the five. That'll stop it for the movement of the change with 3.06 to play. That time is going to be a consideration as well for Nebraska. Yeah, Batch has had a nice day, Joel. He's run the football. He's made some explosive plays running the ball. Seems, seems very sure-handed with the football. He and Shannon Woods both have done a nice job here. Blend. Well, not one is going to get the upper hand. I think they even out those carries, and both of them, the production has been very similar. Bring in Ryan Hale, one of the few guys that they list as like a fullback, eighth back. Also, Adam James. They're bunched on the right side. On first and goal, go to the right side. And a shot on backs, but it gets it down to the two. The yeah, I circled Ryan Hale prior to the snap there. That's a... Uh, the only fullback type they've got on the on the on the roster for Texas Tech. They don't have any tight ends. And so when you come into this area of the field, this is something unique that Mike Leach has to really be creative. Use a, a hybrid type player, and Hale is the only one that fits the mold. I like what Bellini did here. Called a timeout. Stops the clock with 232. You don't want to let them maximize the 40-second clock. So one timeout remaining, and here's the breakdown defensively, and Graham Harrell recognized it, didn't he? Well, this is a play early in the ball game that Harrell does a good job getting it to his big play receiver to the outside on fourth down. You know, fourth down going for this, and it's a breakdown in the secondary. They're playing zone coverage. How does Murillo not expand and go with him? You got two receivers coming up. You got one down to safety, and this guy's got to come with him, and he just doesn't do so. Allows a huge play. He sets up here now inside the five-yard line. You know, he was a consensus All-American. So you want to be on it. I mean, you've got to be Velcro on Crabtree if he's on your side of the you, field. You can't be looking in the backfield, which is what Marillo was doing, to, to think, okay, they're, they're going to call this off and not snap the football. Certainly you've got to expect, and you've got to be on those receivers. Big wide splits of Texas Tech with Baron Batch in the backfield. 2.32 to play. And trying to take the lead on second and goal from the two. Up the middle, hammering it. And won't get it home. That's a nice fill. One. Yeah, they, they, you could hear it up here. That's a nice fill by the linebacker there on Baron Batch. And was that Asante going in there as well? Yeah, Asante, the strong safety, helped out. I'll tell you, the huge split here by Texas Tech. The right guard, right tackle split on that previous play. Hey, that's about six or seven feet there. I tell you, it was, it was pretty wide. We'll take a look at Look at that split that you got right there and watch the fill. Inside is that Asante getting down there at the bottom of the pile, or is that a linebacker? I'm not exactly sure. Couldn't see no, his number. But. It was it was Asante. You were right the first time. Yeah, they're strong safety and not a little guy by any means. It's six one two ten two fifteen. Well tonight, stick around. College football twin bill. UCLA trying to pull off the upset at Austin Stadium in Eugene. The Ducks in a Pac-10 showdown. Anytime I've been there, this time of the year. UCLA, I hope they got the rain here. <laughs> it all starts at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific, presented by Acura in high definition. That's why they're ducks. Yeah, going up to Hudson or in Corvallis, which is only about an hour drive away. Tough places to play. Yeah. Yeah. Corona's the place kicker. He's had problems this year, but this is less than a... If they had to try it right now, it'd be less than an extra point. But it is third and goal. Now the big guys up front, they got to make something happen here. you got Batch in the backfield. He's been powerful. Probably going to look for Batch to come around this way, I would think, the way this thing sets up. Splits aren't as wide, are they now? And a quarterback keeper, Harrell, is he in? Yes! Touchdown, Texas Tech! Well, nothing wrong with the QB wedge play either. You get the big guys inside, Steve Hamby, Brandon Carter, and Louis Vasquez. The trio inside for Texas Tech's offensive front. Hit Graham Harrell, he's got a goose to center, get the ball going. Pretty good push there, I think, by Sue. But just not enough. Graham Harrell gets into the end zone. Big extra point coming up to Donnie Corona. But Joe, a lot of time left in this football game. 2.21 on the clock. 
plenty of time for Nebraska to take the take the uh, kickoff and perhaps move down the field. Extra point, good, and barely. Just got through. Little banker, huh? L yeah, I don't think he asked for it. I'm using the cushion, putting it in the corner pocket. <laughs> Do you believe this? He barely got it there. 221 to play and watch this one over. Well, uniquely here, you know, this thing was to go just the opposite way. They got the left-footed kicker. It's going to go up off the left upright, and it's going to spin to the right inside the bar. That could be just as easily go to the left, but it dinks right inside and over the post. Gets him that single point. Could have been huge if it had missed it with Nebraska getting the football back here. With, I think, plenty of time to go, and they've got some timeouts well, left to their advantage. Well, plenty of time to go. They used all their timeouts. They used the last two, which was really alert by Bo Pelini in his first year as a head coach. I just like the way they managed it on the sideline. That was a good job. Now they have plenty of time. And in college football, it's movement with the chains anyway, so you don't need as many timeouts. Paul is back deep, along with Dennard. And Graham Harrell punching it in from a yard away, and he's had a great day passing. 18 of 22 once again, 256. It's going to be kind of a low numbers day for Graham Harrell as far as yardage, but uh, definitely efficient. What kind of field position is it going to be into the win? Paul will take it from the one. Niles Paul, big return earlier. Tries to turn the corner, won't get there. Jacoby Franks over there, the wide receiver. Ready physical on the kick return game, too. I tell you, Nebraska doing a good job of setting up the wedge inside. And if you're a wedge buster for Texas Tech coming down, you got to have your head on a swivel. I saw a pretty good block out there, Joel. Well, the good thing for Nebraska in their passing game, and they don't have to pass it all the time with that much time on the board, it's downwind. He's not, and it's a real stiff breeze right now. I mean, there's nothing to block the wind in West Texas. Yeah, and this clock is going to continue to run down to two minutes until we'll use normal timing rules when we get to two minutes. But at 2.15 here, if they run the ball, it's going to run all the way down. Gans out of the gun. Mentally cold. Well, cushion on the outside in front of Wall. They'll take what they give them, and they get about eight, make it seven on the completion. Yeah, and they'll set the clock to move on the ready here. So if Nebraska's on the line of scrimmage, you see the referee winding it there. They're not at the line of scrimmage, so this is going to go down to two minutes, and the clock's going to stop. Well, Nebraska's three for three in the second half. They've scored on all three of their second half possessions. But that first one, where they got it deep in the red zone and had to settle for a 21-yard field goal by Henry. And now a conversation with Steve Novak, the referee, or Scott Novak, the referee. Reset the play clock to 25 seconds. The game clock will start on my signal. We were outside of two minutes. When the ball's out of bounds and placed back in, we will wind it up. So the game clock will start on my signal. I like the authority. Yeah, but I think Nebraska's got to be ready sooner than that on the ball, on the line of scrimmage to go because seconds are ticking away. And they are ready. Slide McNeil to tie it in to the same side as Gans. Gans needs to get out of bounds, and he will. And I believe he got the first down. Yes, across the 31 to the 32. First down, Nebraska, stopping it with a minute 42. Well, Joe Gans has shown that he can run a little bit this year of getting out on the option play. This is an option, actually a pass play designed to get outside of the tight end, but they actually got him covered. So Joe Gans uses his feet and gets a first down for his Husker football team, and that's a nice job by the quarterback. Joe Gans, 31 of 37 for 276 yards. Well, their failure on three possessions. Last two of the first half, first of the second half. It could cost Nebraska. They're down by seven. Pocket collapsing. Gans in trouble and on his way down. They'll give the sack to Brandon Williams. He cleaned up, but it was the push up the middle. Now, good pressure up the middle is exactly what you said, Joe. Didn't allow Joe Gans to get that ball off. Good coverage in the secondary by the Red Raiders. Take a look at the front here. You're going to bring four. Just going to push inside. Not going to bring any extra help. And they just get behind the offensive line. Gans, a lot of time. Gans out in the open field. Marlon Luck as the defensive back falls down. Uses the field wisely. Goes to the sideline. So Brent Nickerson fell down. I believe it was Nickerson in the corner. Now, yeah, Marlon Lucky does a nice job here. The senior tailback catches the ball out in space. Joe Gans finds him, and then there's the defensive back. You'll see him fall to the ground and runs out of bounds to save precious time, not trying to make a huge play. 
Looking for another down. 68 seconds to play. A lot of time left, and now a timeout for Texas Tech. It was Nickerson. There was no support on that side. And then they finally got there, but alert play because the middle of the field looked available, and then it closed up on Joe Gans. You know, every timeout that Texas Tech has called has been by Ruffin McNeil to use it for his defense to prepare them to stop Nebraska offensively. And it has worked to their advantage. They've done a decent job responding to what it is. And he's got a group over there on the sideline, and he's talking to his whole defensive front out there. So good job by utilizing the timeouts, even to help your defense. Get our Polaris ATV. Presenting our toughest play of the game, the fake field goal. Jake Wesh, the putter, finding the tight end. And Mike McNeil held on, the sophomore from Kirkwood High in St. Louis. Well, this might be the toughest decision to make of the day. That was an excellent call by Bo Fellini, taking the fake field goal opportunity there. And Joe Gans, he doesn't even know he's going to be back on the field. He had to go get his helmet. <laughs> Yeah, we've had a couple of interesting decisions. That one, and don't forget about Mike Leach on fourth and about four in his own territory in the final five minutes of the game. First time Nebraska. They are still alive and well. Will it continue, though, from the 47 of the Red Raiders? Pocket holds up. Late throw, complete for the first down inside the 36. Todd Peterson. Wow, what a catch. That had to take some zip to well, get there. Defender thought he was going to be able to get there. Brent Nickerson on the coverage on the near side. And watch his ball zip down there. It's a nice, accurate throw. Peterson got his feet down. Good job. They're on the sideline, and Nickerson can't knock it away. Another first down from Nebraska. A minute to play. Ton of time. Again, the quick out. Same target. Peterson. Another completion. Another first down outside the 25. Well, feeling comfortable going on that left side against Nickerson, who's got in man-to-man -man coverage. He's giving him a little cushion. And what Peterson is doing is he's coming back to his quarterback, working that sideline. We feel the same way, young lady, up in the booth. Man, oh, man. These are tense moments. Red Raiders, number seven team in the nation. Highest ranking for Texas Tech since 1976. And Nebraska trying to spoil the party. Trying to get it into the end zone. You know, you just get there. I was going to say, you don't want to leave too much time on the board. Now Gans again out of the gun. Ton of time. And underneath, Marlon Lucky. Short of the first down, clock moves to the 17. Great pocket that time for Joe Gans. The last three times he's thrown the football, that offensive line has just negated all four of the rushers. I think that Ruffin and Neal would like to roll his defensive front, but this hurry-up offense doesn't allow him to do that. 35 seconds to play on a second and two. Looking on a little turn now. Peterson's there. Touchdown, Nebraska! Do you believe it? Well, folks, if you don't think there's some confidence in this Nebraska Husker football team, you haven't watched this football game because they have grown up before your eyes against the number seven ranked team in the country, the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Joe Gaines has been exceptional throwing the football. Great job running the ball, and Peterson here catching and getting into the end zone. Three catches now for Peterson on this drive alone. Two for first downs, and now for the touchdown. Yep, Alex Henry, he's got to get the equalizer, and he does. 29 seconds to play. Both teams out of timeouts, and we're all tied up at 31. What a great job here by the quarterback, Joe Gans, managing himself in the pocket for this touchdown. And on the outside, Peterson just working away from the defender. Good spot to throw the football. Gets on the line, in line there. Done a good job against Jamar Wall, also LaRon Moore. No one has been able to cover Peterson on the outside. And as a big target, Joel, big receiver, 6'4", 215 pounder, that really gives a quarterback a lot of confidence to throw it high into the outside. Well, all three of their wideouts, big guys, as you mentioned, Peterson at 6'4", Swift 6'2", Mentally Colt 6'4". So Todd Peterson, the senior from Grand Island, Nebraska, with eight catches to lead the Huskers for 77 yards. So you think of Nate Swift when you come into the game, and he's got five for 70, but it's been Peterson in the second half. No, when we talked to Coach Bo Pelini, the head coach of the Huskers this week, you know, he sounded kind of down to us. He sounded like it was really hard on him last week, that ball game that didn't play well, didn't execute well against Missouri. I think he's going to really be proud of his football team when he watches this tape, win or lose, and how this game goes. I think he's going to like how his team has responded on the road for their first ball game of the year. Adi Kunanik over the head and out of the end zone. Well, the Red Raiders that were back deep. 
So they'll have it at their own 20 for the third consecutive time, and their offense has not been much of a factor here in the second half. Well, tomorrow, game three of the National League Championship Series. Do or die for the Dodgers. If they don't get it done tomorrow, it's essentially over. The coverage of the game, and it is game three of the NLCS. It starts at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. High definition, only on Fox. Well, the only big plays in Nebraska's given up are miscues in their secondary, blowing big plays, missed assignments. The thing that Carl Pelini, the defense quarter, must have told him on the sideline for this drive, you've got to keep it everything in front of you. Little middle screen, that's what they want. It's Crabtree. Man. They're out of timeouts. They'll get another snap, but <laughs> running out of room. And the clock working against them. Now they've got to get to the sideline somehow to get this clock stopped. No chance for maybe kicking a field goal if they don't get it near the sideline. Throw it down deep to Crabtree. It is Crabtree up against Morello. And knocked away at the last second. Or did he? Yes, knocked it away. That time he got behind it, but the ball hung up on a deep ball down the sideline with three seconds to play. Well, I don't mind the call or mind the throw here. Graham Harrell says, hey, I'm going to go to my All-American receiver down number five, down the sideline. He's on Murillo, who's letting him go again. My goodness, you can't look in the backfield as a defender. You've got to stay with the receiver. The ball almost and caught it, by it Crabtree, and if he had gotten that catch, they would have stopped the clock for a first down. They could have lined up to kick a field goal to win the football game. And the fans are upset, but don't, don't forget, it's not spot a foul. It's a 15-yard mark off if they got a flag for interference. Well, I don't think there was interference on the play, and they're wondering whether or not that's actually a catch. If the ball hit the ground, they're seeing the replay in the stands here. I didn't watch the ball closely enough to see if it did touch the ground, but official right there on the call. It hit the ground, or they'd be stopped right now. Woods. And that'll do it. We go to overtime in Lubbock, Texas. No one absolutely could have predicted this after a 52-17 loss at home in the conference opener last week on homecoming weekend in Lincoln. Bo Polini's Huskers trying to pull off the stunner. Well, a different output offensively. Sean Watson has called an excellent football game for the offensive side of the ball, allowing his running backs to do the work back there with, her, with their quarterback. And I think that overall, Huskers offensively have really set the pace for this game, keeping the ball away from Texas Tech's offense because early in the ball game, Joel, they scored at will when they when they had the football. They took, took, took managed the clock. Look at the total time here in, the, in this ball game as far as keep away. And I think that you're going to see that Nebraska is going to be close to 40 minutes to 20 minutes for for Texas Tech. And you could say Nebraska should have been up in regulation for the opportunities they had. Our overtime rules: win the toss, you're going to defend first. The other team is going to pick the direction. Each team starts at the 25, and here we go. Coin toss. Okay, and this overtime is rules. We'll flip the coin again. Nebraska will be your choice. The winner of the toss, shoot offense or defense, or which end of the field we're going to play on. Each team gets one timeout per overtime period, and if we get into period three, you must go for two points. Nebraska, it's your choice. What do you want to call? Heads. Choice is heads. It is heads. Defense first, which end of the field do you want to play on? Okay. There you go. Texas. A lot of things working Nebraska's way right now. They will be on defense. They'll know what they have to do. Tech gets it at the 25 when we return to Lubbock. shocker this afternoon we're into overtime tied at 31 and the Red Raiders get it first working into the win a little pump fake setting up the screen Baron Batch he's got a block and breaks a tackle inside the 10 to the 5 down to the 1 that's in play call you got an aggressive defense in Nebraska they try to get through the blocks on the outside, not able to do so. Watch the offense release outside. Baron Batch get behind the big guys, just kind of keep them inside. Batch working the sideline, gets in the five. The 
Nebraska deciding to go on defense first, and the philosophy there is you want to see what the offense does. Looks like they're knocking on the door for a touchdown. Bat stays in the backfield with Harold. It'll be first and goal at the one. Guess the wind's not a factor when you're dumping it off on a screen. And now, did they get a delay a game? Prior to the snap, Whoa. delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. And wow. That's only the second penalty of the game on one of the most penalized teams in the Big 12. Well, but that's a huge penalty there because now you're now at the six-yard line. A lot more, a lot different there as far as play calling and what you're going to be able to do. Not going to necessarily be able to run the ball and power it into the end zone as I thought they would. I don't think that Mike Leach is going to worry too much. He's probably still going to run the ball a little bit here with Baron Batch in there. Yeah, personnel it changes both ways. It'll be Batch over to the left side. And he's down to the one. So he got exactly the five back off the penalty. He's well, going to be second split, and goal. Joel, if you can split the defense out by utilizing your offensive line, look at the line splits here. Look at how wide this is. Now, here's Baron Batch, and when he comes across, he just got to pick a hole, A, B, or C, to run the football. And when he gets the football in his hands, you, he can find where he wants to go. Good job of filling the hole there by the Huskers. Second and goal. Change it up now. Bring it in Shannon Woods. Woods to the left side. Yeah. He lost a yard. Maybe a half, but he definitely lost yardage. It'll be third and goal outside of the one. Outstanding play inside. Sue and Stein Cooler, the two defensive tackles inside for Nebraska. You love it. Well, I tell you, you know, it's good football in there. You can play inside when the spread offense, they try to spread you out and be as physical inside and hold up and not allow, but about a half yard inside. Those two guys in there, the two defensive tackles, I think played a heck of a football game for Nebraska. Play clock inside of 10, two to each side. And Harrell rarely gets under, but now he gives it to the wide receiver who will make it to the corner. Touchdown, Eric Morris. That's a serious rhythm play. Uh, if you can't get it inside, take it around the outside. Eric Morris, a speedy one. But I tell you what, it takes a team effort to make a play sometimes and a touchdown. And maybe your All-American has to make a play. What I mean by that is Michael Crabtree, number five on the near sideline. It's a huge block on the outside to allow this to get in the end zone. You see guys on the ground? Well, that's because of Michael Crabtree. kind of plugs it in there. Excellent job there getting in the way. You know, not the most physical, but it gets it done. Corona just hit the upright. Will he split him this time? It is no good, deflected at the line. It didn't make it over the crossbar. Nebraska blocks the extra point. Amazing turn of events here. Defensively, you're able to knock that ball away on the kick coverage. And set you up with a chance to win a football game with a touchdown. So when we come back, can Nebraska get into the end zone? So it is deflected, and we will stay here now. It's deflected at the line. Well, the Husker fans who are here in the stadium are all happy. We're actually next to the athletic director's box, and all the fans in the box are jumping up and down. But there's still plenty of work to do for Nebraska on the field. They've got to take it from the 25-yard line into the end zone. They haven't done that routinely today. But here late in this ballgame, late in the fourth quarter, Joe Gans has orchestrated this offense to perfection. Their last three series have all been touchdowns. All four in the second half they've scored on. So 24 points in the second half on the play fake with Lucky. Middle of the field, the tight end goes the other way. It's Swift. And a little contact. Swift couldn't get up into the air to go after it, but it was well overthrown. I'll tell you, in regulation, Joe Gaines has played exceptionally well. He's 36 of 42, 349 yards and a couple of scores. This one just gets a little bit out of the out of way, a little bit over Swift. Can't catch the football. Actually outplayed Harrell in this football game, 19 of 24 for Graham and 260 yards in the same two touchdowns. But they didn't, they didn't think we'd see that today. That was a little hook by Nickerson on the hip. And that's what Swift was talking about. They'll set up Swift and Peterson. They're tall wide receivers on the wide side of the field. Second and 10 for the 25. Plenty of time for Gans. Now, intercepted. It's over. Jamal Wall saves the day.
Well, credit the defensive pressure for Texas Tech up front. Getting to the quarterback, Joe Gans, and making him get outside of the pocket. Not a very good decision. Not a great throw. You'd really need to get just a first down in that situation. I think Joe Gans was looking down the field, being a little bit, trying to get a little bit more than he needed to, get that ball in the end zone perhaps, but ball trying to throw it away. Wall comes up with a huge interception. Quarterback trying to just throw it out of bounds and couldn't get it there. Their highest ranking since 1976, and the number seven team of the nation escapes and barely. Yeah, it's an escape. You go to overtime, you kick a touch, you get a touchdown, you miss the extra point. Think that Nebraska may have a chance to score a touchdown, winning with their extra point, but negated by a turnover defensively. So you got the quarterback rolling out of the box, and the quarter and the defense just put him there, and he's trying to throw it away. Wall right there just takes the football and. Seals the victory for Texas Tech. So Wall, the junior from Plainview, the biggest play of the game defensively for the Red Raiders as we head downstairs, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, uh, congratulations. What a win. Overtime, Nebraska gave you all you can handle. Yeah, uh, Nebraska did a great job coaching, I thought. And I thought their team came in really inspired. And I'll tell you, I thought their O-line did a great job. Uh, you know, uh, just like uh, Nebraska O-line of old, I thought. And I can't say enough about their staff. And then I was also thrilled uh, with our guys for rising uh, the way they did. Key time, tough situation, all that stuff. And, you know, sometimes you just got to keep fighting and swing longer than the other guy. And I felt like we did. And they're a great team. Talk about, talk about the big call in the game. You guys were tied at 24. Ball on your own 36, less than five minutes of play. You go for it on fourth and four. Your, your thoughts on that? Well, uh, uh, I don't know. You know, it's like, uh, it's like uh, Sharon Stone said one time uh, before, after a movie she did. She said, no guts, no glory. So, uh, so anyway, uh, I was just excited about our guys and the way that uh, they responded. And, I, you know, I mean, uh, uh, well, I thought we might be able to draw them off. And then if we didn't, I felt like we could get it, and we did. So. You did. Congratulations, Coach, and best of luck next week against Mike uh, Texas a and Let's get Graham Harrell, Michael Crabtree in real quick. Michael, uh, you broke the all-time touchdown record here at Texas Tech. 32 career touchdowns. Your thoughts? Ah, oh, man, it's all the ground, man. I'm just, I just love him, man. We're just having a great time, man. And Graham, talk about the game winner here in overtime. Nebraska gave you all, all they can handle. You guys were not on the field that much of time as far as offense goes, but you get the game more with Morris. No question. That was a huge play. Uh, Crab had a great block on that. I don't know if you saw that. Eric did a good job. The O-line, you know, they were all pitching. And that's all we had to go outside. We went outside and got a win, and that was huge. Now, one other play that was huge. You guys were tied at 24. Less than five minutes left to go in the game. Fourth and four from your own 36. We're surprised that Coach Leach made the call. Well, he just wanted to try to get him off sides. He didn't tell him to snap it. <laughs> and uh, I guess the center thought we said thought we had him, but we didn't. Uh, but you know, in fourth and four, I'm going to crab, and he made a play for me. That's the way things go. Oh, then Michael. Also, you got the you got the pass on fourth and four. You were open. Were you surprised you were that open? I was just running my route, man. I knew Graham was going to connect, man. It was fourth and four. We seen him standing there, so we just took advantage of it. All right, congratulations, the Red Raiders. Stay undefeated. Appreciate it, Graham. Thank you, Michael. Joel. All right, I love it. And I said at the time, I said, are they just trying to get him offside? Well, I think they you were. You know what Graham Harrell was. Well, you know what? When the center sees somebody in the neutral zone, they've got to snap the football. Great, great execution by Texas Tech. Yeah, and at the same time, we talked about the guts it took, and that was the word that Mike Leach used. Five catches, 89 yards, two touchdowns. He had the first of the day, yeah, and this, it set the tone. This definitely did. A start of the day it was a huge play, a little scissor screen inside, and made that happen. And then the quick one there to the outside just got his feet in the end zone. So. Those two had a huge play, and now this is the fourth down play that we talked about, we interviewed about, and this was an interesting call by Mike Leach. Nonetheless, it turned out to be one that kept them in this football game and wanted for him here at overtime. And I like what Mike Leach said about Nebraska because their staff had a good game plan. They certainly did. I think Coach Watson really did a great job on the offensive side. I think that uh, Carl Pelini is going to be happy about his defensive effort and their execution. It was a pretty good effort by Nebraska. Yeah, strange final score because the extra point, it was blocked. It wasn't. It was an interesting.
exciting day for Corona, the place kicker. 37-31 is our final in overtime. And don't forget tonight, 10, 10 15 Eastern. In fact, 7 15 out of the West Coast. It's UCLA taking on the Oregon Ducks up in Eugene. Next week, college football Saturday, Twin Bill. Kickoff show, 11 30 Eastern. Followed by Texas Tech, Texas AM, and then number nine, USC, looking good at the half today, 21 to nothing over ASU. Well, they're taking on Washington State. For Gary Reasons, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. Homecoming weekend in Lubbock complete. Red Raiders prevail, the number seven team of the nation. Watching Big 12 College Football Saturday.